If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, have you ever had any strange or scary sightings involving cryptids, humanoids, or unknown creatures, such as a tall creature in the woods, a wendigo, a dogman, etc., and the like? If so, what was it? Back in high school, probably 17-ish, I'm now 27, I would make regular late-night trips back from my girlfriend's house. She traveled the road to and from her house about 100 times easily. One night I headed home, and on this curve, my headlight shone into the ditch. I only saw it for a second, but immediately I began crying, like I didn't have control over my emotions. What I saw in that split second was a long-bodied, white-skinned creature bigger than any person, crawling in the ditch. It reminded me of a hairless cat. The head, though, was the shape of a person's head but had no facial features except a large black mouth. Also, its legs were backwards, like a person doing the crab walk. Anyway, I was terrified to go back, but I did it during the day. The only thing in that ditch was a fallen tree. After I got over the fear of it, I drove that road probably 100 more times and never saw anything like that again. I thought it may have been the fallen tree playing tricks with the light, but I don't think so because I tried to make myself see it again out of that tree, but I couldn't. I've recently decided to move from my sister's home, and I was telling my older brother about a few sightings me and my sisters have been having over the last year or so. These were on multiple occasions and at random times in the morning or night. He told me to look it up online since he's crazy into supernatural things, and he told me it might be a dog. I don't know what that is exactly. The first time I saw it, I was looking out of the front door. I always check outside before I take the dogs out because we live in a kind of town home community where people have all types of vicious dogs unleashed, and I never want to have an encounter with any of them. Our front door is all frosted except the center, which is the only part you can see out of, and it's shaped like a rose. I took a look outside and caught sight of a dogish shaped kind of creature, but without my glasses on, I just thought it was a dog, and to be sure of this, I, Tata, put my glasses on and cracked the door to get a better look. The only way I can ever describe this creature to anyone is that it was very spiny, it was hunched on all fours, and it looked exactly like a human pretending to be a dog from behind, like it walked kind of funny on its legs. I slammed the door and turned around to yell for my sister's attention so she could also see what I was seeing, but when I looked back outside, it was gone, vanished, like it was never even there. This area is heavily wooded across from our townhouse, so I figured maybe it was a dog, and I was just super sleepy and hallucinated everything about it. This is Georgia. I've lived here my whole life, and the weirdest thing I've seen was a drunk man trying to ride a dog like a horse. I talked to my eldest sister the next day about it, and her reaction was, yeah. What the heck is that thing anyway? I've been seeing it a few times when I pull in from work. The other night, my headlights flashed on it, and it ran into the woods. She later called it a creepy white dog but admitted that she'll sit and wait in the car for a bit of time before coming in, just to make sure it's gone. She even called me once and asked me to unlock the door so she could make a run for it. Some of our relatives have said that it's just a dog and we shouldn't worry about it. Now you guys don't have to do this, but if you were to get down on all fours, raise your back a little bit, and walk across the floor just like that, that's what it was doing when I saw it, every step it took looked, well, like a human pretending to be a dog. We've never seen its face, though. I'm a little too scared to wonder what it looks like. So we live in an apartment complex in the middle of town. There's wood scattered around, but it's a decently developed area, which is why it's weird. The buildings in the complex all surround this big field-like area, picnic tables, trees, it's not a dense amount of trees, it's more like a park. This area is as dark as duck at night. Anyway, my husband took our dog, a little Sheba, out one night around midnight, maybe later. He's gone forever, but I don't think much of it because sometimes he just gets excited and goes running with her because our dog is cute AF when she runs around. Anyway, he comes back out of breath because, yeah, they were running, but after something. The way he described it, it was small, larger than a cat, but had cat-like ears, silhouette, and was kind of fleshy looking with weird elbows that stuck out to the sides instead of inward like a hunched dog or cat would. When he initially saw it, the dog saw it first, and they chased after it. They lost it in the dark and circled around the buildings until they came back to where they first saw it. The dog suddenly got scared and ran him the duck back to our building. He hasn't seen it since, but it's stuck with him. Besides that, he's seen some weird shadows around that same area at night, but he saw those in Colorado too, so I don't know if that's something weird that followed him because there's definitely something that follows him. But this cryptid is duck and weird sounding. Basically, the way he describes it makes me think of a rake, but tinier and not standing upright. 
I live in a rural part of East Tennessee. The closest grocery store is about 20 miles from here. I am pretty much surrounded by farmland. The area in which I live has been known for decades for being haunted. The land behind my house is all farmland. The past few months, I have been going outside at night to water my garden, and I can hear strange noises coming from the field behind my house. I've heard what sounded like a woman screaming, I've heard someone saying, hey. I even thought I heard my mom say my name from the field before. My husband had heard a voice say his name on multiple occasions, but last night my dog was barking and growling like crazy, so my husband went outside to look around to make sure nothing was out there, and he said he heard what sounded like a baby crying in the field, but he said it sounded very distorted and definitely not human. He ended up coming back in, and we went back out to listen, and the noise had stopped. I am not sure what's going on. We live on Indian burial grounds, the whole area I'm in is basically an Indian burial ground, so I heard. My husband is half Cherokee, and he said he just has a feeling it may be a Wendigo or Skinwalker. I just wanted to get a few opinions on what it could possibly be because it seems like it's getting braver. I know I could write it off and say it's just a mountain lion or something like that, but saying mine and my husband's name on different occasions makes me believe it's obviously not an animal. Has anyone else in Tennessee had an issue like this, or just anyone in general? Oh, and I almost forgot, this past winter we had a few deep snows, and one morning when I went out to the backyard, I saw these prints that looked like the toe part was a goat hoof and the back was like the back of a high heel shoe. The print was about a foot long. I'm not sure what that could have been. On one of my camping trips, I saw something that still raises a lot of questions for me. I was about 9 to 10 years old, and I was camping in Redwood National Park in California. I was woken up by these weird and loud clicking noises coming from outside our tent. I decided to see what it was with my little flashlight. There was a huge, skinny, whitish thing outside, in front of one of the tents, and doing God knows what. I didn't know what it was or where it came from. The loud clicking noises were indeed being made by it. Here's how I remember it. It was tall, white, and hairless, and its back was full of iridescent scales or wings. It walked on four legs, but it could stand up like a man. It was flicking these tentacles or feeler thingies like snakes to taste the air, I guess. So, what do you think it was? I was a few minutes away from home and driving along one of our numerous back roads. In my very rural area, the deer population is huge, so it's extremely common to see a number of them, but I'm not sure if I really saw a deer today or not. This creature was maybe a hundred yards away from the road on higher ground in a harvested corn field directly facing the road, where I could only see its front, not its back legs or rear. It looked similar to a deer but looked way too tall, though it seemed as narrow as an average whitetail. It looked darker too, almost a blackish brown, but with a lighter chest and neck. I could make out what looked like antlers too, but again, I was too tall and just seemed off. It also really felt like it made eye contact with me, but I didn't stop to find out. As often as I see deer, I can pick them out pretty confidently and quickly. This one was a bit confusing and made me question what I saw. If anyone has any suggestions for what it may have been, I'd love to hear them. This sighting happened in Indiana. It happened about two years ago, the anniversary of it is actually coming up because it happened on my friend's birthday. The day started off with four of us hanging out. Let's call them J, B, and T. It was Jay's birthday. We all hung out at the local park, which had a large river running next to it and a local hiking trail running along the river. The hiking trail has a long history of being an old train railroad and all kinds of things. Anyway, around 9 p.m., B and T decided to go home and left me and Jay at the park. Me and Jay's idea was to camp out in the woods that were next to the park for the night since we had a secret camp spot there. I say secret loosely since all the neighborhood teens also camped out there and partied. Me and Jay began to set up camp there and attempted to start a fire, but since it had been raining the past few days, the wood was too wet to start. At that time, Jay got a call from B. He answered it, and at first, he had a weird look on his face. He then took the phone from his face and put the phone on speaker. Can you both hear me? B had said. We both said yes. We could also hear T in the background. All right, well, me and T just saw something really weird. We asked him what he saw. It looked like a person running on all fours. I sat there, puzzled, and asked what was so weird about it. Because it was running across the river by your guy's campsite. We quickly packed up and left the campsite. Surely we thought maybe they were joking, but both B and T have never been known to lie. We decided to walk around the town for a few hours until we somehow ended up walking on the hiking trail that ran by the river. It was around 3 a.m. now. 
we were starting to come to a tight bend on the trail where you couldn't see that well in front of it. It was already night, and the trail was littered with trees on both sides. As we were turning the bend, we both heard a very odd noise. I'm still not exactly sure how to describe it. It was almost like a young lady crying, but also some type of wicked laugh at the same time. I don't even think that describes it. But as we fully came through the bend, the path turned straight. We both stopped in our tracks. Standing about 50 feet in front of us seemed to be what I can only describe as an elongated grey humanoid thing on all fours slowly crawling towards us. It had no hair anywhere on its body. We both quickly turned around, and I have never run so fast in my life. We didn't say a single word. We just ran the two miles back to my house. We rarely talk about it anymore, only that neither of us can describe the sound we heard that night or what we saw. Keep in mind that my friend is a hard skeptic of anything paranormal, supernatural, or anything related. About three or maybe four years ago, I was riding around with a few friends in the Star Valley area. I don't remember the exact spot, but it was around a gravel road in one of the cities. I remember there being a few light posts. It was only for a short moment, but I saw something move across the light of one of the lamp posts. I only saw the silhouette. It looked sort of like a giant. It had a round, spherical body and long, skinny legs. It appeared to be around half the height of the lamp post, which was about 20 feet tall. It didn't look like it had arms, and I could see no features. I wanted to brush it off as me being tired or I had just seen something from the corner of my eye, neither of those were true, I had been full of energy and I had been looking straight at it. I couldn't even blame it on alcohol or drugs since I didn't drink at the time and I don't do drugs. None of my friends had seen it. Normally, I don't scare easily, however, I had a horrible, anxious feeling that we needed to leave. I've learned that when I feel this way, something bad usually happens. We left, and I haven't seen it since. I'm moving away, so I doubt I'll ever get the chance to see it again. Perhaps someone knows what the thing was. I haven't been able to find anything about it on my own. I never thought something so bizarre could exist. I would have to say it's been my only paranormal encounter, which rarely happens, that has dealt with a cryptid. As someone who has always been fascinated by the unexplained and the mysterious, I never expected to have my own encounter with a cryptid. But one summer night, while camping in a remote wooded area, I had an experience that shook me to my core and made me question everything I thought I knew. It was a warm evening, and I had set up camp near a lake, looking forward to a peaceful night in nature. As the sun set and darkness enveloped the forest, I built a small campfire and sat by its warm glow, listening to the sounds of the night. That's when I heard it. At first, it was just a faint rustling in the underbrush, but it quickly grew louder and closer. I grabbed my flashlight and shone it in the direction of the noise, expecting to see a deer or some other common forest animal. But what I saw sent shivers down my spine. Standing in front of me was a creature unlike anything I had ever seen before. It was tall, at least seven feet in height, with a humanoid shape but covered in fur that seemed to glisten in the moonlight. Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly intensity, and its long, sharp claws glinted in the light of my flashlight. Its face was a mix of human and animal features, with a snout-like nose and pointed ears that twitched as it sniffed the air. I was frozen in fear, unable to move or speak, as the creature stared at me with its piercing eyes. It made a low, guttural growl that seemed to vibrate through the air, and I could feel the primal fear of being in the presence of a powerful predator. As the creature took a step towards me, my instincts finally kicked in, and I stumbled backwards, tripping over my own feet in my haste to get away. I scrambled to my feet and ran through the woods, my heart pounding in my chest and the creature's growls echoing behind me. I didn't dare look back, I was too afraid of what I might see. I ran as fast as my legs could carry me, adrenaline coursing through my veins, until I finally reached my car and drove off, leaving my campsite and the terrifying encounter behind. When I shared my story with others, I was met with skepticism and disbelief. But I know what I saw that night was real, and it has left me with a deep sense of awe and wonder about the mysteries that lurk in the wilderness, beyond our understanding. To this day, I cannot explain what I encountered that fateful night. Was it a cryptid, a yet-to-be-discovered species that roams the remote forests? Or was it something else, something from the realm of folklore and myth that came to life? I may never know, but that encounter has forever changed my perspective on the unknown and the inexplicable. This story happened a little over a year ago. I live in York, Pennsylvania, and I worked for the post office about a year ago. I would start work at 3 a.m., and I lived about 45 minutes away from the post office, so I would leave my apartment around 2 a.m. I know it is early in the morning, and some nights I don't get much sleep, but I know I did not fall asleep at the wheel. This was a real encounter. I was on my way to work, and I had just gotten on Route 30. 
I had crossed the bridge that goes over the Susquehanna River. I was getting into a woodsy area, so I slowed down in case deer were crossing the road. I saw this thing ahead of me, and I thought, oh crap, I'm going to hit a cat. It just stood there and looked at me. Yellow eyes are glaring. As I got closer, I saw it was huge, like as tall as a full-grown lab retriever. It had a cat-like body, but the head was wide and the neck was super long. I still, to this day, have no idea what it was. I told people at work, and they're like you were probably just sleepy. This thing was definitely in the middle of the highway. I cannot even find an animal close to the description. I thought maybe it was a weasel, but they don't get that big, but the body and head were proportionate to the weasel. Short legs and a long neck, but the head was wider. The fur seemed black, so that's why I first thought, oh crap, it's a cat. Any thoughts on what the heck this could be, or have you experienced anything similar? It was early October in 2018, and we had just moved to the area almost a year ago. It's a small house in a one-off cul-de-sac. The closest thing to civilization is a church across the street, and everything else is roads, neighborhoods, or woods. There's a healthy amount of trees in between the neighborhoods, giving a nice sense of privacy. Out of all the eight or so houses on this street, only our house had access to the woods surrounding the street. My mother was ecstatic about the house, as she always enjoyed the woods. I always got a creepy feeling from them, but I figured it was just my anxiety. At the time, I was grounded due to some poor grades, which left me bored most of the time. I figured that since I had seen a ton of deer through our back window, I'd go exploring a little bit and see if there was anything interesting. The woods aren't terribly dense directly behind us, but they definitely get a lot more dense if you go further in. I explored a while, finding a few deer bones and skulls, they even had the antlers attached, I thought it was really cool, a whole car, albeit missing the wheels and guts, and a lot of trash. I got an old plastic container, started collecting the things I found interesting, and kept it in the back of the old car. I did this for about a week, gathering about three skulls, a handful of bones, some glass bottles, and a few other things I can't remember at the moment. Over the weekend, I didn't end up going out, as it was stormy. The following week, I want to say Wednesday, after the ground dried up, I ventured back out. I went to the car to refresh my memory on how many things I had collected, and the deer skulls and bones were gone. I was confused and assumed some animal picked them up and trotted off with them, so I went about looking around for them or new things to collect. As I looked around, I noticed the antlers of a deer skull deeper into the woods. I don't normally go back there, especially since it's technically part of our neighbor's property, but I figured I could just pop over and grab it. As I picked up the skull, I noticed a bone a few feet away, sticking out of the leaves. I figured I might as well grab it too, so I picked it up too. As it picked it up, I quickly realized it had a bit of blood and sinew on it, which was alarming, to say the least. I quickly dropped it, wiped my hands on my jeans, and walked away, leaving what I assumed to be the buzzard's meal alone. As I approached the car, skull in hand, I noticed something moving in the trees a little beyond it. I froze, assuming it's an animal, not wanting to spook whatever it is. I scan the area and see what I now would call a crawler, a little past the car, eyes trained on me. Near white skin, skinny to the point I swear I could see its ribs, naked, hunched over, almost full black eyes, the whole nine yards. As soon as I make eye contact with it, it runs off before I can really react. After that, I went inside, and I honestly don't go into the woods back there anymore. Not to mention, someone bought the extra property back there and decided to build a house there. That critter is their problem now. Recently, seeing a string of similar encounters reminded me of the incident, and I figured that I would investigate it a little more. I couldn't find anything on the internet besides someone telling me it's fake. For context, we've lived in this house since 2017, and while I've heard the odd animal noise, I haven't seen any evidence of the thing since. Along with this, I haven't gone anywhere near that old car since, let alone the woods themselves. I've only heard of the odd encounter from some of the farm folks I talked to and from online posts from the surrounding areas and states. I haven't witnessed much else that would be considered super slash unnatural, and I don't really automatically believe anything talking about supernatural things unless there's evidence, but this seems at least somewhat solid. Overall, I don't know what to think about all this. What do y'all think? I've never actually believed in cryptids, nor have I looked up cryptozoology, like ever. I didn't even know that these things existed until a couple of days ago. We went for a walk with a friend three days ago at night in a village in Hungary, Borshad County, while chatting in a video call, the mother of my friend wanted to sleep so we went outside so we could talk without disturbing her. We were walking towards the end of the village, where the public lighting ends. There is a cemetery and a forest there. So at the start of the forest, from around 60-70 meters from us, 
200 to 230 feet, we saw a creature on all fours, very pale white skin, it was almost glowing in the dark, very thin legs and arms, but the arms were even thinner than the legs. Its back was hunched, leaning forward on the arms. It had a round human-like bald head, minimal facial features, maybe a small mouth or a very small nose, but not sure, and no fur. It was about 5 feet tall on all fours. It started staring at us and then slowly started walking, still on all fours, towards us. We were ducking scared, so we ran as fast as we could. At the same time, we went back but didn't see it again, and we even went back today with no success. Do you think it's a crawler? Do you know about any sightings in Middle Europe, especially in Hungary? I've looked into it, and there are some fan uvo, look it up, sightings reported ranging from the 80s to the present day. It looks pretty similar. Should we hunt it? Should we try to take a picture? Will it hurt us? Is it strong? It's tall but looks very weak. And by the way, where are crawlers when it's not dark, in caves or something? I'm not 100% sure if this was a real cryptid, but there's no other explanation. When I was around 7 or 8 years old, I'm 16 now, my brother, 12 to 13 at the time, went outside around 10 at night to check on something, a whole different story, I won't get into it here. We heard an absolutely blood curling screech that seemed to be every frequency at the same time. I was terrified, but my brother was not. I ran inside and started crying, and not long after that, my brother came in shaking, saying that some sort of bird flew about 4 feet above his head. He described the bird as having about a 6-7 foot wingspan, and it was completely grayish or black. Although it was dark out, we're not sure of the exact coloring. We can only guess that the screeching noise came from the bird. This happened in Arizona, and I honestly think it might have been a thunderbird. Okay, so this happened to me and my boyfriend about two years ago, in the middle of the night. It was about 2 a.m. one night in September. We live about 25 minutes out of town in northern British Columbia, Canada, and our house is surrounded by the woods. Because it's such a dead road. So I'm driving. I pull out to go left down the road and turn on the high beams. Then we see it. On the road is this weird, hairless, pale humanoid creature crouching in the middle of the road. It almost seemed to be glowing, but that was probably because it was such a pale white and I hadn't turned off my high beams. It whipped its head at us, as if it were surprised by our lights turning on. After a second, it shambles across the rest of the road in jerky movements and down into the ditch, which is about three feet deep. But that's not it. We both watched as it went down into the ditch and turned around to face us. And it stood up on its back legs, exactly like a human, but not quite. Except it stood over five feet higher than the ditch, taller than our car at the time. And remember, the ditch is already three feet deep, so this creature was over seven feet tall. It looked aggressive, hunched at the shoulders and leaning forward slightly as if to look at the car. And I swear, I made eye contact with it. No. It was not watching us drive by. It wasn't looking at the car. It was looking through the window, and it was looking right at me. Whatever it was, it was intelligent, and it knew that the car wasn't moving itself. It knew we were inside. I drove so slowly, turning my head and keeping eye contact with it as we drove past, and it did the same, craning its neck to watch me leave. My boyfriend couldn't see it past me at that point. Eventually, it's out of my vision, and I look back at the road. We are both completely silent. I'm driving less than 10 kilometers an hour, having taken my foot off the gas when I saw something in the road. To this day, I don't really tell people because the people I tell just laugh it off or try to explain it as an albino starving bear or something. This year, his parents were visiting just before winter hit. They have a dog. Me and his mom were having a smoke on the deck, which is about 6 feet off the ground. It's dusk. There is not much light. We were on the left side of the deck, on the same side, we turned onto the road to go to town. You can see the patch of wood where the creature would have been before, so this instance happened in the same little area. I hear a bunch of cracking twigs just as the dog goes nuts. He is a small boy, so we were surprised when he almost jumped off the deck to run in the woods. My boyfriend comes out just in time, and we see, just beyond some trees, a tall, lanky white form. But we couldn't see anything else definitive, and his mom has terrible eyesight and doesn't have glasses. I knew it was the same creature. I had this twisting feeling in my gut. We don't leave our house at night. Maybe it's weird, but I want to see it again. Mothman, of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. It is a giant creature said to have large wings and glowing red eyes. It mostly terrorizes cars but was supposedly at the site of a catastrophic bridge collapse, so some people think it's an omen of death. During the time Mothman sightings began, 
there were also a lot of UFO sightings in the area, causing people to speculate that Mothman was actually an alien. There were also claims of people being interrogated by men in black who were pale men dressed in suits but who lacked the ability to emote the way humans do. Speculation is the men in black, where other aliens are looking for the Mothman and covering up the UFO sightings. This happened to me while I was in college, 20 plus years ago, and I never forgot it. It was one of the first times I ever remember seeing true fear and panic on someone's face. This part will only make sense if you are familiar with Monterey, California. I lived in the seaside area, and my college girlfriend lived in Carmel Valley. Sometimes, when I would drive her home late at night, we would take a lightly used roadway called Laurelace Grade, which was long, dark, and full of winding turns. It also led us out near her house, so it was a minor time saver. We were driving home late one night, and we were chatting and laughing about something or another, as we usually do on the ride. When she looks out the window, she stops mid-sentence, scrawns, then looks forward and yells, go go go. She is terrified. I floor it and ask her what is happening, and she won't talk, she is literally next to me, hyperventilating. I drove unsafely fast through the twists and turns of the road and, a few minutes later, slowed down, assuming that whatever scared her was fast in our rear view. By this point, she has calmed a bit as well, and I ask her again what happened. Her first reply was, you didn't see it? She then proceeds to tell me that as we were driving around a corner, she was looking out the window, and my headlights lit up a human-looking animal standing along the side of the road disjointedly on all fours, with a human-looking face that looked like it was hissing. My first reaction was that it might actually be a hurt person and maybe we should go back or call 911, but she was adamant that no, it was not a person, and there was no way we were going back. We got to her house a few minutes later, and out of extra precaution, we called the local police and asked them to go and check the area. We never had any follow-up from them. Fast forward several years, 15 or so, and I was telling a co-worker who was from that area about the incident. She got really spooked, and when I finished, she told me that Laurelace Grade was known for strange sightings and is a spot that UFO fanatics tend to go to, I'm not a UFO guy, which I thought was interesting. The other day, when I was driving to a friend's house through a few back roads, I had an uncomfortable encounter with a deer. It wasn't a deer, but a deer is the best equivalency. I call them not deer slash not a deer, and a few friends of mine have reported similar encounters. Anyway, my not deer encounter occurred a few days ago. There was a heavy rain following some cold snaps, so the cloud cover was absolutely horrible. I'm talking 12 feet of visibility when driving and up to 30 feet on the highway. I decided to take the back roads because I enjoy them, and this late in the season, there aren't any tractors on the roads. It was well past sunset, around 7 p.m., and on a country road around 7 miles from a city, with two 15-foot deep ditches on either side of the road. The not deer was basically standing in the middle of the road. I was going incredibly slowly because, well, fog. I saw it well in advance and stopped a solid 12 feet away, waiting for it to run and jump off into the fields with its herd. It was clearly looking across the road, and then it looked at me. It wasn't a deer, but it was. It looked, out of proportion? I would have assumed some sort of growth defect or birth defect, except it was proportionally wrong. Its face long and pointed like a dog's snout, I have a German shepherd it reminded me of, but it was still a deer? Nothing funny, no antlers or horns, had ears that were fine. I want to say I'm 80% sure its limbs went the right way. I thought my contacts had blurred because it just felt and looked wrong. Fur is a little bit different, more gray than brown, like white pine tree bark, more pointy, and stretched, but I can't think of anything to say behind that. It was too foggy and dark to really explain anything else, my headlights reflected the deer's eyes like any normal deer. Then, because it was sideways, it turned and adjusted itself on the road. Kind of jerky, not the twitchy, bouncy movements of a normal whitetail. At this point, I'm a bit freaked out because this is not a deer, and I am not prepared for this sort of thing. It took one step towards me, not moving but adjusting its hoof or foot, and I noped the duck out. I slammed my truck in reverse, found the first turnaround spot, a dirt access for tractors onto the fields from the road, and turned the hell around. I went to the nearest busy road and took that route to my friend's house instead. Ironically, I used my windshield wipers after, just as a slightly hysterical joke to myself, maybe it was a bug. A big weird bug, and my right windshield wiper broke. Shut down, and the motor died instantly. I stopped laughing and proceeded to anxiously call a friend on my long drive home because I love Michigan. Any thoughts or similar encounters? Middle of the lower peninsula of Michigan during the encounter, a few miles from a lake. Super foggy, after sunset, 
thoroughly freaked and a bit pissed. I need to do some car repairs in the middle of the winter. Me and my pregnant wife were staying at my parents' house in northwest Tennessee on September 17, 2021. It is about 50 yards from our new house. I went out on their back patio to smoke a cigarette around 12 a.m. over the fence, I heard something that sounded like it was choking on something but, at the same time, sounded like a distorted pig squealing. It would make sounds in about 2 to 3 second spurts. I honestly thought it was a hawk or owl, anything that could be explained. I thought it was definitely weird, but probably natural. About 3 hours later, I couldn't sleep and decided I would go to the gym. As I'm walking to my car, across the yard, and towards the road, I hear this same weird sound coming from about 50 yards away in my 10 o'clock direction. I looked around, and I couldn't see or hear anything. Then I hear, hey, hey, in a woman's voice coming from the same direction. So I looked back up, and there was nothing there. As I'm scanning the yard, I hear that loud squealing noise again. I got in my car and dipped as fast as possible. I thought it was weird but didn't give it a second thought until a month later I was on the internet and saw a video of a man riding a horse in Arizona, I believe. And in the video, I heard a woman say, hey, this makes him and the horse both freak out and run away. It was believed to be a skinwalker. When I heard that same voice and those same words, almost like a recording, my heart sank to my stomach. I really don't believe in any of this, and I've tried every way I can to disprove it, but I truly can't. It doesn't scare me as much anymore as it intrigues me. I am so curious to know what that was and why. I'm an indigenous Australian, 36F, First Nations. Due to colonization, I'm obviously not what one would consider a full blood, but nevertheless, I identify as indigenous. I grew up hearing stories about yaois and hairy men. Yaois are small meerkat type creatures, and hairy men are what would be considered a Sasquatch type creature. In my youth, approximately 16 years old, my cousins of similar ages and I would go and spend holidays with family in a town with a large population of indigenous people. Not gonna lie, we were there for the boys. LOL. This one particular summer night, we decided to walk into town. Where our family lived was maybe 2 to 3 kilometers out of town, but the road was a highway that was lit all the way and had a cemented path all the way from town that ran alongside a cleared field. The grass wasn't mowed, but it wasn't what you would say was overgrown. Just at that in-between stage of being mowed a few weeks ago. So we started our trek home at about midnight this night. There were four of us girls. Two in front and two in back. We got about 100 meters out of town when myself and my cousin, the front pair, looked up and noticed what looked like a large man with a long black coat and hat walking towards us about 150 meters ahead. Now the path, like I said, was a straight shot with street lights the whole way along. We hadn't been drinking or smoking anything. We paused and were like, shit, who's that? And stood there debating whether or not to continue. The whole time, I didn't take my eyes off this person. As my cousins glanced back and forth during the debate, we all stopped talking once we noticed that this man had all of a sudden turned into a type of haze or fog. Picture it like someone blurring out a person in a photograph, it was out of focus, but everything around was as clear as day. All of a sudden, Thisman was now a little creature, it was hard to estimate size, but I'm thinking it's similar to a meerkat or a large rabbit up on its hind legs. It was looking straight in our direction, then after 5 to 10 seconds, it hazed over again and completely disappeared. We all saw it. And we all still talk about it to this day. I'm pretty confident that it was a yaoi or a little hairy man. There are different theories in the indigenous community about them. Some believe they live under river beds, and some think they live inside cattle. There are also people who say they lure little kids away into the bush. It should also be said that I'm a fairly pessimistic type of person. Up until this point, I had never really had anything like this happen to me before. I lived in a very rural area. If anybody is familiar with North Carolina, I lived in Mount Olive, very close to the county line, leaving Wayne County and going into Duplin. This little house is pretty much surrounded by my woods and fields, and there were a few other houses but not many. It was pretty quiet. One night, I was in the process of getting my dogs back inside the house. They weren't paying much attention, except for one, but she wasn't making a scene or anything. I noticed something sitting down the road, just off the edge of the property I live on. It was small, like it most definitely wasn't tall. It was crouched, almost like it was squatting. I hate how silly it sounds, but the way it was sitting reminded me of Golem from The Lord of the Rings. It was very clearly humanoid, its skin was so pale that it was as white as paper. Its skin looked tight, like there was no loose or saggy skin at all. It wasn't wearing clothes, and it had no hair at all. 
it didn't have the same intimate areas as a normal person, looking at it, you couldn't see what its biological sex was. Its eyes were big, I couldn't see eyeballs or anything, just large black eyes. It hadn't noticed me, so I turned on the porch light. It looked away from the dogs and looked at me. It freaked me out, so I shined my phone flashlight directly at it. I think it didn't like the light because the second I shined a flashlight at it, directly into its face, it took off running, and I haven't seen it since. I haven't seen anything else like it either. I think it was watching my dogs, and I don't think I want to know what would have happened had I not gotten them in the house in time. Does anyone have any ideas of what it could have been? Someone told me it could have been one of the moon-eyed people, but I don't live in the mountains or near Appalachia. I lived six hours away from that part of the state, but even now it's just four hours instead of six with where I currently live. Not knowing what it is has bugged me ever since that night. Moon-eyed people, to my knowledge, wouldn't be in Eastern NC. I'm open to any suggestions. So, I'm here after listening to encounters on the internet. One of the stories that he read was found here on the internet. I nearly crashed my car when the story told of a large humanoid creature wearing what appeared to be a black cloak and an owl's face in the central Florida area. Talk about a heart-stopping moment. Here is my encounter with a similar entity. It was in the afternoon in late May of this year, 2021. I remember it was later in the afternoon or early evening, but it was a slightly overcast and gray day, so I can't tell you from memory if it was dusk or earlier. I live near a nature conservation area in the central Florida area. My husband and I were very fortunate to find our property, an ample acreage, heavily wooded to the point where we cannot see our neighbors or any lights from their homes. We lovingly call our home the swamp. I was outside in our driveway, which is the only cleared space on our land, save for a natural circular clearing in our woods. I was walking back to our porch when, for some reason, I was compelled to turn and look back to the tree line, around 80 to 100 feet away from the house. I do want to note that there was not a single ounce of fear in me, in fact, I was quite calm when I made eye contact with it. At first, I didn't register what I was looking at. I knew it was an owl, which in my woods is not an uncommon sighting. But then it kind of shifted, and I saw more of it. It was not just an owl, it was the head of an owl on what I can only describe as the shoulders of a human, and it looked like it was wearing a dark cloak, either made of dark foliage or feathers. It was tall, and from the trees around it, I guessed it was around 7 feet or so. It just looked at me, and I looked at it. I looked around and blinked, sincerely thinking it was a trick of the lighting or my mind creating a thing where there was nothing, but no, when I looked back, it was still there, calm and unmoving. I myself was still unafraid, which is not normal for me as I can freak myself out easily. For some reason, I felt another urge, this time to nod. I nodded towards it, like I was showing my acknowledgement of it, it felt natural and right to do so, then turned and went inside my home. I did not go back outside that day, but the next morning I went back outside and stood in the same place on my porch to look at what it may have been, and there was nothing I could even remotely try to place as it. The space where it stood was between two trees at the opening to the forest line leading back to the small clearing, there were no low-hanging branches, no large leaves, and nothing that I could trick myself into believing that was what I had actually seen. I have not seen it since then. I did some mild searching on the internet but found nothing even remotely close to it, so I just let it go. Until today, when I heard that story about an hour ago. Does anyone know what this might be? Has anyone else in the central Florida area, or anywhere, seen anything like this? I live in the PNW, about an hour or so away from Seattle, in the mountains. I grew up in a small logging and mining town. That has a large handful of quarries, abandoned mines, caves, and small old abandoned towns in the mountains. My neighborhood is tucked away in the woods, with a river running right through most people's backyards. My first encounter with this creature was, I believe, in February 2019. Sometime around 10 p.m. I was walking my dog up the thin, curvy stretch of road that is my neighborhood. Listening to my typical edgy girl playlist while slowly picking up the speed into a jog. My dog and I continued following the paved road. Around one of the sharp turns, not even half a mile into my walk. My dog significantly slowed down, and his body language changed drastically. He didn't want to go any further. He was focused on a dark patch of pine and maple trees growing on one of the larger fenced-off properties in the neighborhood. I tried to look in the general direction he's staring in and scan the area. I looked past the metal fence sitting in the shadows, and I gazed upon a small patch of forest with a creek and a decent-sized pond. My focus was quickly interrupted by an eerily human-like figure standing under the trees in front of the fence. An overwhelming amount of dread quickly washed over me. It felt like all the hairs on the back of my neck were standing straight up. Everything felt wrong. 
I felt like I was in a horror movie. All I remember was making a run for it with my dog shortly after and not looking back. The empty hollows that were its eyes still give me the feeling or dread as I type this. What I saw was not a bear, wolf, coyote, or mountain lion, and it sure as hell wasn't human. Whatever the hell it was, it stood on all fours. Its elbows were poking out, its ribs were protruding, it had long bony fingers, its spine was poking out a sickening amount, its skin was a sickly pinkish pale, it had no ears and little hair, and it had a face, but I could barely make anything out. I clearly remember its hollow eyes. My second encounter with this creature was only a few months later. I was going on another walk, this time without my dog. It had been a while since I was comfortable going outside at night. This time, in fact, I had gotten a bit further up the neighborhood than the last time. I started walking around the corner, just up the hill, where I had seen the creature for the first time. I heard a woman scream, and it stopped me dead in my tracks. It sounded off. I don't know how else to explain. I got that weird feeling of dread again. The screams were then shortly followed by non-stop crying. It sounded like it was coming from the forest right off the road. I tried to focus on my breathing and not freak out, but I was definitely panicking. I started running up the hill, the crying sound slowly fading away as I got further. I was panicking, I didn't quite know what to do. I had to run back in the opposite direction for about one quarter mile to get home. After a few seconds of reassuring myself, I turned around and made a run for it. The crying had completely stopped by the time I had gotten back to where I originally heard it. I didn't care anymore. I kept on running, even when I noticed something quickly following me from tree to tree. I didn't see it, but I heard something large moving around in the trees after me. To be frank, my stamina is pretty garbage, so by the time I needed to take a moment to breathe, I was right back where I was when I first saw the creature. I didn't stop for very long because I felt like it was still following me. By the time I was running again, it sounded like something was right behind me. I heard footsteps behind me, but I couldn't muster the courage to turn around. This story isn't mine, but that of my grandmother, who lived with her boyfriend in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, at the time of the Mothman sightings. This is the story of her encounter with the monster. I have always been skeptical of things to do with the paranormal, so when I heard of the so-called Mothman sightings, I simply thought it was all just a hoax. Besides, I wasn't scared of pretty much anything because my dad was a US Marine, and I always carried a firearm with me for self-defense. Anyway, about two weeks after the first sighting, I was driving home late from work through the TNT area. It was about 11.40 PM at this point, and it was pitch black for the most part, so I was having trouble seeing through the darkness with my dim headlights. As I got about a mile and a half into the TNT area, I suddenly saw a large black mass in front of me, and I had to slam on my brakes in order to avoid hitting the damn thing. Once I stopped my car a few feet away from the creature, I finally got a closer look. The creature stood completely still in the middle of the road and looked like an oversized stuffed animal with jet black fur, like a giant fluffy mound. What the hell is this? I thought to myself as I reached for my bag. I wanted to get my handgun because I didn't know if this was a bear or something else. However, as soon as my finger touched the buckle, I heard an audible whooshing sound. I looked up to see that the animal had unfolded two massive wings, revealing a bird-like body with no head or neck. I was astonished as it stared at me with blood-red eyes that glowed like those of bicycle reflectors. I just sat there, frozen in horror, as the animal let out a screech that sounded like it came straight from hell. After coming back to my senses, I decided that I was getting the hell away from this thing. Now. I slammed my car into reverse and floored it. As I drove away, I watched as the monster flapped its wings, and with one swift motion, it took off straight up into the night and vanished. We moved to North Carolina about six months later, and I haven't returned to the TNT area since. Flash forward to now, and I'm still in shock. I believe I have discovered a new cryptid, or, well, me and my younger brother. It was terrifying even if the first encounter was for literal seconds. We were taking out the trash together one night during the summer. My brother wanted me to come with him because there have been animals going missing lately, and our parents assume it's been coyotes. We went out to take it, and I was looking out at the forest line in our backyard. If it weren't for the back porch light, I wouldn't have seen the thing. It was running straight at us. It was about six feet tall, humanoid, and slightly hunched over with its legs spread out, as were its arms. I would have thought it was an actual naked person if it weren't for the fact that it had no genitals, hair, body hair, or a face. It was completely featureless. Its skin looked like a whitish pink. I thought I was going insane. I asked my brother if he saw it, he looked over and immediately sprinted to the house and followed behind, and I could hear the thing's feet smack against the hard ground as it moved faster to catch one of us. 
Luckily, we had a head start and got inside. We looked out the window to see if it was still there, but it was gone, and it was like the thing disappeared the second it realized it wasn't getting to us. Our parents asked us what's wrong, we're both teenagers and knew neither of them would believe a word, so we lied. We said that we heard howling and got scared. We then both went to our rooms and questioned one another about what we thought we saw. I first said on three we should say the color of the thing's skin, we counted to three and both said pink, and both of our faces went pale. We knew we weren't just seeing things. We had no proof, we had no other witness to it, it was just the two of us knowing that there was something roaming the woods behind our house. More animals have gone missing in our neighborhood, some of our own animals too. So far, it has gotten four of our cats and two of our chickens. I never found the cats, but it did leave the chickens in the coop we had them in. It was like it was sending a message, the chicken's limbs were ripped off, and then they were ripped in half. There was blood everywhere. I sometimes feel like it stalks me in the woods. I never go near them at night, but I do sometimes go in them during the day. It feels like there's always something over my shoulder. Sometimes I hear fallen branches break like something heavy stepped on them, and I'll find limbs placed weirdly, like in stacks. I have no idea what it is, all I know is that I will figure it out. If anyone has heard of something like this, please tell me. Around 2005, right after college, I moved back to my hometown of San Diego. A lot of my friends still live there, so it was a super easy transition. It was also super easy to find friends to go ghost hunting with, as we all love to get creeped out. I am from Chula Vista, so the legend of the Proctor Valley monster was nothing new. It's a folkloric story about a few different tropes. A woman in white roaming the desolate road, a phantom car that comes up behind you at high speeds just to disappear right behind you our version of Sasquatch called the Zubies roaming the land, and even UFO sightings. It was a hodgepodge of paranormal activity. Mostly, it was a two-lane state bypass road that ran for a few miles between Chula Vista and Hamashaw and was essentially a service road for the airport antennas. But it was also right next to a high school, and for decades, development didn't make it out there, so it was a perfect setting for teens to drink and read ghost stories. One day, my friend Sal and I decided to drive down the road. We've done it maybe 10 times. It's very desolate and spooky. You occasionally see headlights in the distance, and it's almost always border patrol doing their rounds. Ever so often, you will see another car, undoubtedly looking for ghosts, just like we would. But this time, it was absolutely empty. You see familiar things there. Evidence of a bonfire, empty beer cans, abandoned appliances, etc. The road is half paved and half sanded over, so you always hear the tires as you change from surface to surface. This time, it seemed so boring. Nothing was out there. Just a stretch of nothingness. The second to last turn, my Jeep lost the back end a bit, so I understeered to straighten out, and as I did, the headlight focused on what we can only describe as a seven-foot owl with human-type legs and yellow eyes standing in the middle of the road. I slammed on my brakes, and the sand flew past us. We just sat there looking at this thing for what seemed forever but was maybe 45 seconds. It was taller than my car, a weird brown and black color with white stripes on its chest. But it had human legs with knees and weirdly taloned feet. It had bright yellow eyes. Then all of a sudden it opened its wings up and started to take off over our car, and it let out a very low and guttural screech as it flew over us. My friend and I just sat there, trying to figure out what the hell just happened. We've been out there so many times but never saw it again. I'm going to tell this story, but I would like it known that I'm still a complete skeptic. It's just one of those things that I do not know how to explain what I saw. I live in South Florida, and about two years ago, my husband and I were driving up the highway to head to Orlando. I'm looking out the window, looking at the fields of cabbage palms and tall grass. All of a sudden, I see what looks like a large, unkempt dog in the field. I start thinking to myself, how strange. I wonder why there's a dog in the middle of nowhere. All of a sudden, the thing stands up on its hind legs. I have no idea what it was. It was huge, towering over the little palms and the tall grass. In discussions with others, we thought maybe it was a bear, but its body was more lean than a bear, and it had this long, wavy, matted hair all over its body. The hair hung from its arms. Unfortunately, since we were on the highway, we were driving fast and passed the thing before I could really get a good look at its other features. My husband is convinced it was the skunk ape, but I really have no idea what it was. It bothers me to this day. This story outdates me, but it's kind of stuck with the family since then. It starts in Missouri, roughly an hour south of St. Louis. Around 25 years ago, 
my older cousins and a few of their friends were playing in the woods doing typical boy things when they came across an entity that morphed into a dog in front of their eyes. He described it as a sort of manifestation. He said that the animal it manifested into was a somewhat big black dog. The creature had short hair, was thin, had a long tail, and, strangest of all, had a glowing crescent moon shape on its forehead. Now, normally I would have written this off as just messing with the young kids in the family, but how they talk about the experience really gives you chills. It still haunts them to this day. And again, I still would have written this off as good acting, except that there are at least six people who have witnessed this creature in my family. All of them have seen it in person around 25 years ago at different times, and what makes this more crazy is that it seems the beast can influence dreams. All on the same night, five of the six reported having a nightmare that revolved around this dog. All of the nightmares were roughly the same, the dog was attacking someone viscerally, someone that mattered to them. Following this, they all had nightmares about the dog, but never at the same time. My family even had the opportunity to speak to law enforcement about it and was told that another family had already reported the same creature. According to my family, this dog-like creature followed them around, occasionally showing itself in the distance, for an entire year before leaving them alone. Since then, none of them have seen it or had any dreams about it. It was very strange how it all went down. Last year, on Saturday June 27, my paranoia was at its peak. My friends wanted me to come pick them up, go to McDonald's in the nearest town, and then drive around on country roads. Because of my paranoia, I had my mom walk me outside to my car, and I had my dad watch out through the window to make sure my mom was safe going back into the house. I also had them lock the doors. My paranoia was really bad that entire summer. I picked up my friends, went to McDonald's, and started riding around country roads. This is something we do often because there's not much to do in our village in the St. Louis Metro East. We were coming back into town sometime between midnight and 1 a.m., and we noticed the moon appeared red. We started talking about it, and we began arguing about what effect a red moon has on people. Just as we started getting louder, we saw a creature on the side of the road. It seemed to be humanoid, but its forearms were much longer than its upper arms. It was very pale, almost grayish in color, with no hair. The fingers were very long and pointy, maybe claws? It also appeared to be very malnourished, we could see its ribcage. It was crouched down next to a telephone pole, just as we were coming into town. I slammed on the brakes and turned on my brights to get a better look at it. It looked at us and then zoomed up the pole faster than was physically possible. It was like a beam of light. We all went silent and started discussing what we had just seen. We all agreed that we had seen the same thing. All of our descriptions were the same. Just up the road was the friend's house we were going to. They had to run in to grab some stuff, so I stayed in the car with the doors locked and my eyes closed. When they came back outside, we backed out of the driveway to head to my house, which is right down the street, and we saw it behind us, standing in the middle of the road, looking at us. My house is only a couple blocks away, so when we got there, we ran inside as fast as we could. We locked the doors and stayed at my house for a while before I eventually gave them a ride back to his house a couple hours later. A month ago or so, my mom was driving me home from my job at Mount Airy Casino Resort. It was nighttime, as I work long hours. Sometimes from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. It was quiet, and nothing really went on. I could see the tree trunks and some of what we passed by. I zoned out while staring straight forward until something caught my attention immediately. There are two giant red dots in the pitch blackness behind the trees. We were about 60 feet away while driving down the road. The dots were about 6 to 7 feet off the ground, on the left-hand side. I called them eyes instead of dots because they actually followed the car as we were moving. Even when the high beams weren't shining on the area, I did nothing but stare, I was too distracted with thoughts and questions to take a picture, and even then, my phone camera sucked. The eyes vanished as we passed, and I thought it was slightly creepy. My mom said, maybe it was the moth man, and I got mad at her. She usually spouts religious nonsense and a bunch of random stuff. I never believed in the moth man, I thought it was a cheesy old timey slasher villain or an urban legend. It wasn't until a day or two later that night, while on my lunch break, did I look up what the Mothman really looked like for the first time. I originally thought it was an object, like those little red dot signs sticking out of the ground, but I never saw these two eyes again. I then thought it was an animal that came and went, but they were just too massive and unnatural to be any animal I have seen or known about during the night. The Mothman is the only thing that really describes what I saw, however, I never saw a body or anything else. Just pure red dots the size of traffic light circles. I used to be one of the ghost tour guides at the Crescent in Eureka Springs. Obviously, 
we learned and told the ghost stories associated with the hotel, but in the summertime, we ran an additional series of campfire stories that focused on tall tales and legends of the Ozarks, many involving creatures and cryptids. One of these legends was about the monster of Peter Bottom Hollow, out by War Eagle, which wasn't terribly far away. The legend tells of a creature that lives in the caves and stalks the area, tearing apart livestock limb from limb, and even people. It was first sighted hunched over, but was described as being able to stand to a height of 9 to 10 feet, being covered in pale shaggy fur, having razor-sharp teeth and claws, and having a foul odor like rotting meat. Though I had great fun telling these stories, I can't say I believe them. But one night, while driving home after my shift, I saw something strange. Now, ghost stories and tall tales are best told in the dark, ideally right before bed, so I would often get off shift late. In those days, I lived in Fayetteville and commuted between Fayetteville and S, easily over an hour's drive. And I would take the back roads. This means I'd be driving those tiny, winding country roads between 1am and 2am this was prime time for deer and other critters to play chicken with my vehicle, so I took it slow and kept my eyes peeled. On this night, as I came around a bend, I spotted something just off the shoulder of the road. Instinctively, I slowed down in case it made any sudden moves. But as I got a better look at it, I realized I had no idea what I was really looking at. It was sitting on its haunches, hunched over, with its back to me, some kind of beast, evidently feasting on a roadkill carcass. Covered in pale fur. Clearly huge, an easy 10 feet if it stood. And though my windows were rolled up, the stench of rotting flesh filled my car stronger than any passing whiff of roadkill ever has. I only saw it from the back. As I rolled by slowly, it never turned around, too intent on its meal to bother with me. And as soon as I'd passed it, I resumed a regular speed and had an uneventful rest of my drive home. I stayed up that night googling what kind of animal it may have been, but nothing really looked like it. The next day at work, I described the creature to my co-workers, hopeful that someone who'd lived in these parts longer than I would recognize what I'd seen. But all they could offer was a teasing, no idea, maybe it was the monster of Peter Bottom. Eventually, one level-headed co-worker suggested it may have been a hog. Of course, there are hogs around these parts, and they're quite big and will scavenge anything. For the rest of my time working there and for all those lonely late-night drives home, I accepted that explanation. But I've seen plenty of hogs in my day, and I've never seen one with limbs as long as what I saw on that creature that night. I had an encounter with something near the old Alton Bridge in Denton, Texas. I had been out there a couple of times, but after dark, you felt a very ominous presence set in. At night, I would hear something tapping on the trees across the river bank. It sounded like a hatchet repeatedly chopping away at the oak. I caught figures hiding behind trees on the opposite ends of the riverbanks watching me through my thermal cam. In the pitch black. The closest I got to whatever was out there was when I was hiking with my mom on Mother's Day. After the sunset, my sister got scared, and we decided to get out of there as fast as possible. Something was following us in the treetops. You could hear it crawling through, keeping pace with us. It sounded big, like a chimpanzee or something. My mom is confirmed to be crazy and a heavy believer in the paranormal. She walked directly up to it in the trees and tried to talk to it. The noises that it made, I'll never forget. It made weird guttural noises, and then something that sounded like the predator clicked. I pulled my mom away and got the duck out of there. The old Alton Bridge would be a good place to hunt after dark. About 20 years ago, southwest of Ely, along a dirt road up in the mountains that my dad and his buddies used for hunting, they came across a random cement structure off to the side of the road. He said it was about a 10 foot by 10 foot platform, about a foot tall. On top, there was a heavy steel grate. They had been in that area before and had never seen it, so they stopped out of curiosity. They looked into the grate and couldn't see the bottom, so they used a flashlight. I still couldn't see anything. So they dropped a rock to see how far it went. Based on the time it took for the rock to hit the bottom, they estimated it was about 200 feet to the bottom. They dropped another one to confirm, but after it hit, they heard a low, long growl that turned into a screeching howl that he said was unlike anything he's ever heard. I've never known my dad to be afraid of anything, but he said it was the most frightening thing he'd ever experienced. He and his buddy ended the hunting trip and came home. They've never returned to the area, and he even refuses to tell me exactly where this is, as he's concerned I'll take a bunch of guys up there to look for it. This was back in around 2012, when I was a teen. Around this time, I'd spend the summer on Lake Conroe in this middle-class subdivision near the resort, backing up to the lake. I'd go on walks often and was used to seeing wild animals like owls, ravens, falcons, rabbits, your occasional fox, and deer. I haven't been back since my grandma sold the house. 
At around 9.30 p.m., I was walking around the neighborhood when I spotted a dog. She was across the street, where the main street that loops around crosses with another residential street, walking out of a patch of woods. It was normal to see deer around there, like I said, but this time it felt different. She was really big and thick in stature and muscle mass, and she had a thicker neck and big cheeks. It's almost like a cow head. She just stood there in the middle of the street, and I stood and watched her. There was a street light overhead, but street lights were sparse there, making everything around her very dark in contrast. We both stood there for about a minute, and she didn't look at me. Then she walked away slowly into another patch of woods on the other side, but not like how a deer normally trots, but like a person with four legs would. I'd never seen the joints above the hoof move like that. I was never scared, but I felt kind of quiet on the inside. When she crossed into the woods, I thought to myself, what a weird deer. I don't know if this was a deer or a deer with a disability or a genetic defect, but it stuck with me. The moment was ethereal. What do y'all think? When I was a child, I would get sent to my grandma's house on school holidays. She lived directly across from a sugar cane field. My uncle and cousins lived in Innisfail, where my uncle would leave my cousins at our grandma's house as well so we could play. We regularly played in the cane field. When the cane was fully grown, we would play hide and seek, tag, or race each other through the cane, often with our arms up, protecting our faces. A few times, we thought we could hear someone else running with us. One day we were walking through the cane, talking about nothing important, when we thought we saw another kid in the distance of the cane. We called out to them, and they looked at us. When we got closer, we saw it was certainly not a person, but this bizarre and pale-looking humaniod looking thing. It turned out to not be necessary in a threatening way, yet we didn't know what it was, so we ran away. A few days later, Grandma went to work one evening, leaving my cousins and me home alone. One of my cousins went outside for some reason but came back crying. We asked what was wrong, and she said there was something crouching behind the wheelie bin growling at her. So we all decided to check it out. The thing was there again, but you could see it better. I could see it was really skinny, had abnormally long arms, basically the hands went past its knees, was hairless, no genitals or nipples, but was naked. It had big but purely black eyes, no white, a long face, what I'm assuming to be a mouth, yet it was just like a line on its face where a mouth should be, and it sort of had these long fingers that it had gripping on the side of the bin. The reason we got such a clear description of the thing was because it was poking its head out from behind the bin to stare at us. We decided to throw things at and near the bin to see what it would do. It made a growling or screaming noise like an angry cat, but deeper than it stood up, it wasn't very tall or big, possibly a similar size to my cousins and me, who were 10 to 12 years old at the time. It then turned around, couched down, and ran slash bounded away on all fours back into the cane field. We told our parents and grandma, who just made a joke about it and ultimately didn't believe us. My cousins and I no longer played in the cane field. Several months later, which went into the new year, I was sent to grandma's house again for the school holidays, and my cousins were dropped off there too. One night, we were in the back seat of our grandma's car. Grandma was driving while my uncle was in the passenger seat. While grandma was reversing out, we all saw a thing couching in the grass near the cane field. It was illuminated by the car lights. Our grandma and my uncle thought it was a person, so grandma turned the car side onto it, and our uncle rolled the window down to ask if they were okay. It then laid down flat and straight, then put its face up. My uncle immediately put the window back up. It was the same thing again, but this time instead of running or bounding away, it sort of slithered or shuffled backwards into the cane field while staring at the car and laying down. My uncle and our grandma went quiet while driving, then pretended it never happened. Even years later, they just try to say it never happened, that it was a weird dog, or joke that it was a farmer's inbred kid. The last time I ever saw it was when a cousin and I were sitting on a ledge in grandma's yard around sunset. We had been talking for probably an hour, and I felt as if we were being watched, but there was no eerie feeling. We suddenly stopped talking and turned our heads to see it standing there, sort of poking out of the cane field. Basically openingly watched us, we weren't sure of what to do, but my cousin moved his hand up like an almost wave. It moved a hand similarly but still had its arm down and did its side on. Then a car was coming down the road, so it darted back into the cane. I have no idea what it could have been. It seemed to want to watch us more than anything, though despite its abnormal appearance, it didn't seem malicious. We have no idea what it was, where it came from, why it was there, if it would do anything to us, etc. We also couldn't talk to anyone about it because you'd certainly get made fun of or thought to be crazy. Five people saw it, my cousins and I certainly saw it more than once, and it seemed to be mainly around when the cane was high. At the time of this sighting, 
I was 11 and living in rural Wisconsin. I wish I never saw what I did that day, but I sure saw something because my best friend saw it too. It was a partly cloudy day in late spring. The weather was absolutely perfect. I had spent the night at my friend's house, let's just call her Jay. Jay and I decided to go on a bike ride around the neighborhood. The entire neighborhood is surrounded by thick woods, we often hear packs of coyotes at night. We took a new path, this time along a main road. An awful stench alerted us to a gnarly deer carcass rotting in the ditch. Its body was contorted in a really bizarre way, but I think it was just hit by a really fast car. Anyway, as we biked past, a couple minutes later I saw something in the trees at the top of a hill. Not even a quarter of a mile away, I'd say. I stopped biking to look at it, and Jay circled around me. We stared up at this moving shape in the woods. At first, I thought maybe it was a small deer, but it was too dark. Then it began to grow. As the figure emerged from the trees, it appeared to be almost seven feet tall with two humanoid legs. I felt all the blood drain from my face. I distinctly remember saying this, Jay, are you seeing this too? She nodded, looking just as scared as I felt. But it wasn't just a seven foot dark figure. There were eyes. I don't know how to explain it, but they were piercingly bright, like two glaring stars in their dark fur. When I made eye contact, everything went white. It was as if the creature's eyes were glowing, like too many suns. I couldn't breathe, I just stood there in utter shock as I tried to tell myself it was an illusion or that I was dreaming or something. Suddenly, it fell down on all fours and sprinted back into the woods, disappearing just as quickly as it had appeared. Jay and I stared at the tree line for another minute before hopping on our bikes and practically flying down the hill to get back to her house. We couldn't come up with any explanation for what we just saw. Jay ended up telling the story to her mom, but she insisted that it was a black bear or a large dog, as sometimes they stand on their hind legs. I would have agreed, but it doesn't sit right. The way it grew, it's unnaturally white, piercing eyes, and its movements were otherworldly. Jay and I still talk about it from time to time, unable to come up with a solution. I haven't gone back to those woods since. We had a house in southwest Florida, back in the early to mid-80s. For over a week, our neighborhood had a series of what I believe were werewolf stockings. It was June, I think, and around 9 p.m., I was out back on the patio. At that time, no one had fences around their property because all of us knew the other families around the area. The only exception was the family across the street from us, they had a seven-foot-tall cinder block wall behind their house. They had a large wooded piece of property and kept equipment out there. The dad was in construction, and the wall enclosed three sides of the property. It was hot out with a slight breeze, no clouds, and starry. As I sat there, you could hear the dogs in the neighborhood begin to bark, and then everything got quiet. A lone howl started, so I howled back. I'd do this rather well, I'd watch Nat.geo. And mimic wolf cries. Anyway, this went on for about five minutes, and each time the howl from the other end got closer. Down the road are train tracks that run north to south. The sound seemed to come from that direction. I started to get spooked as the howling stopped. Our yard had bushes and a tree on the side where the sound came from. The hair on my arms and neck started to stand up, so I felt like I should go in. As I stood, I heard movement in the bushes. I glanced over and saw something move. I didn't wait to see what it was, so I booked it into the house, and I stood by the door that had glass panes in it. I watched as something very large and dark moved about the bushes. It moved away, and I could no longer see it from my vantage point. I went to the front porch to look out the windows, hoping to get a look at whatever was there, but it never came out that way. So I went to bed and read for a while to calm down. About less than an hour later, my brother came home. He came to my room and was as white as paper. He was shaking all over, his eyes were the size of saucers. I asked him if he was okay. Now my brother is the sort that has an explanation for anything unusual, and he's a big guy, so for him to be in this state was not normal. He said I need you to come with me right now, I'll explain when we get in the truck. I was still dressed, so I got up and went with him. When we got outside, I asked what was going on. He told me there was something in the road by the tracks he needed to show me first. I was not happy about that, as I just had my own experience with something like that. As we got there, it looked as if something had exploded all over the road. There was blood everywhere, as if something was mowed down in that spot, but there were no body parts anywhere. My brother related it to what he had seen coming down the road. I was coming home, and as I got closer to the tracks, there was this huge thing lying in the road. I thought it must have been a mastiff or Great Dane in the road, but as I pulled up to it, it didn't look like a dog I'd ever seen. It was hairy, its head and nose were twice the size of a dog, the body wasn't a dog, just dog-like, but much, much bigger. 
It was all over the place, there was an arm on the road. Not a dog, a human arm. There was no trace of anything when we got there, and it only took us a few minutes to get there. I said to get the hell out of there now, and we went back home. I told him what I experienced just before he got home. A couple of days later, my sister came to me and said she had been seeing a large dog prowling around at night. It was huge, and she had seen it across the street as she sat on the porch. I told her what my brother and I saw and not to be outside alone until we could find out what it was. We got together and decided to stake out the yard the next night, sure enough, it was back in the neighbor's yard. This thing was about the size of a Shetland pony, black in color. We had flashlights and turned them on, they took off to the back wall behind the house. Their dog was going off like crazy, they had a small terrier. We watched this dog thing scale the wall. The neighbor came out to see what was going on, and we shouted that there was something in his yard. He went back in and grabbed his pistol and went around back, but by that time it was gone. I've lived in the Portland slash Beaverton area all my life. In my 20s, I took to driving around the farm areas of the western foothills. Cornelius Pass is out there. There's a little old mini-mart that sells quail eggs and other sundries. About five minutes past that, on the left, is an empty field with a wide shoulder. I used to lay in that field and look at the stars, sometimes with friends. I decided to take a guy I was seeing out there. I nicknamed him Einstein because he was always so logical, skeptical, and questioned things. I didn't believe in any woo-woo. So we are driving at night. We've passed the store and come around the bend. Something runs out in front of my car from the left, crossing the road. I slammed on the brakes, and the lights hit it. I need to interject and point out that neither of us were inebriated in any way. No alcohol, no pot. We were smoking cigarettes, but I've never seen anything weird while smoking, or indeed, I've never even had a hallucination once before or since. The thing ran out and reared up in the light. It ran like a chimp with short legs, propelling itself forward with its knuckles on long arms. It was wearing a red hat, pointed shoes, and a backpack. My brain kind of broke when I noticed the hat and pack. When it reared up, I saw its face. Honestly, the closest description I can make is of the kobolds from the Magic Kingdom for sale books. Big, wide mouth twisted in a grimace. Teeth, long and pointed. It was in the light for only a split second and continued on into the brush. I slammed my car to stop and put it in reverse, and my friend, white-faced, grabbed me and yelled, what the hell are you doing? I informed him we were going after it, and he reached over and locked the doors and said I was not. So I looked at him and asked what we saw. Panicked, I don't know a troll or a gnome or something I don't care just drive. I didn't want to get killed by a red cap, so I took the win and happily drove on. We ended up going back home because, for some reason, he didn't want to sit in the dark grass anymore. Many, many years later, I came across a database of Southeast Asian cryptids and fairy creatures, and I came across a Cambodian creature that seemed to match what we saw, but I've since been unable to find it again. I want to say Mren Kong Veal, but I don't think they look like angry chimpanzees. But there were a lot of Cambodian refugees coming to the area in the 80s and 90s. So there is a connection there? That's all I saw, and I still drive that road pretty frequently when driving north and skipping Portland. Every time I turn that bend, I look for it and wonder what it was. It's currently midnight, this all went down about 45 minutes ago. My brother decided to make a late night run to the grocery store, but on his way back, his tire exploded, so he called my dad to come pick him up from the gas station he managed to pull into. There are some sketchy people around that area, so my dad suggested we just change the tire and escort him home to make sure the donut didn't go flat too, because it's a fairly old spare. My dad calls me and asks me to bring my tools and a jack so we can change the tire. After the donut is on, my dad goes in front, my brother follows, and I follow behind my brother. We live on a back road off of a back road with not many houses, lots of farmland, not much traffic, and lots of deer at night, so my dad and I turned on our LEDs that we use when we go off-roading when we got to our road so we could see deer well before they were a hazard. The fields stretch about a quarter mile from the road on either side, and the lights are bright enough so that I can just barely see the tree line past the fields. We get up to a bend in the road where a small patch of wood separates the field from the house beside it, and I see glowing eyes to my left about 15 feet away from the patch of wood on the field side. There were lots of deer out, so I was on high alert. I slowed down and kept an eye on it. The thing had arms. It had a humanoid shape and a humanoid head. It was not far from the road, so it was lit up pretty brightly. I have no doubts in my mind about what I saw. I was going about 15 miles an hour, it wasn't just a quick glimpse. I looked at it for at least 30 seconds before it was out of view. 
Once I realized that I had never seen anything like what I was seeing, I started honking my horn and pointing so that my brother and dad in front of me would look, but by then they had already passed the patch of woods and couldn't see it. I would guess it was around 6 to 7 feet tall when standing, but it appeared to be either hunched over or kneeling on the ground. It was resting one elbow on something, and the other arm was straight. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with Nosferatu, but his head and face looked very similar to Nosferatu's. It looked gaunt and pale, had pointed ears, and had glowing eyes. I am sure the glow was because of the lumens I was shining at it, but that at least tells me it's nocturnal. I live in North Carolina, if that helps anyone figure out what the duck this is. I'm very concerned because it wasn't far from my home, and I've been hearing very strange noises at night the past few weeks. I took my puppy out to use the bathroom yesterday around 10 p.m., and I could hear something in the forest walking very slowly. I know it wasn't a deer because the puppy was barking and it didn't run off. I didn't have a flashlight, so I just kept my gun out in case it was a predator and it tried to eat my puppy. It was snapping big sticks, and it sounded heavy. I'm convinced it wasn't a bear because we don't live in bear country, we've never seen bears around here, and we go into the woods a lot. We also have a chain link fence all the way around our property line, including in the woods. We inspect it often, and I walked the perimeter today, and none of it was damaged. Whatever this is, it's agile and smart enough to climb or jump over a fence without noticeably damaging it. A few months ago, I also noticed a lot of scratches on the trees around my house, they were all no less than 7 feet off the ground, so in my mind, that took the mountain lion out of the equation. If anyone finds this description familiar, please let me know. Northern Ireland, a man says he has spotted an unknown creature walking on two legs in the Northern Ireland mountain range. The man, an avid hiker in his 50s who chose to remain anonymous, said he was exploring an isolated area of the Sparren Mountains in December 2015 when he came upon the unidentified creature. I had walked to three hilltops surrounded by dense forest and was heading back up a hill towards a tree line to my car, he told Debbie Crossley Hatswell, who has been investigating the Bigfoot phenomenon in the United Kingdom for a few years. The Irishman claims he saw the being moving behind him as he approached his vehicle. It was walking down the hill towards me on a route I had just taken, one kilometer away, he explained. The area I walked in was wet, but there was no river, and there was some very marshy ground on my first hill near my starting point, up past two forests. The hill is known as Carnelli West Top and is 505 meters high. The big thing was coming towards me as I left Carnelli West Top and was walking towards Mullabane Summit. The alleged creature was described as being about 8 feet tall and walking on two legs. The eyewitness did not provide a color or approximated weight but added that it was very large and that it resembled nothing he had ever seen before. I have been hiking since 2004, mostly alone and all over Ireland. I am not easily spooked, but I did not hang about, as I am of the opinion that if it wanted to, it could have caught up with me easily, he explained. The man, claiming to be an experienced hiker, said he wasn't carrying binoculars in his backpack that day but that the bipedal creature was not a human being. I had great visibility, and I know about the optical illusions and what lone trees can give when walking. I have pondered this for a while now, but I have not a clue what it was to this day, as I see people on the hills and mountains at various distances. Hatswell, who claims to have come upon a Bigfoot-like animal in the 1980s, told Cryptozoology News that the man is a known wanderer in the United Kingdom and that he is serious about what he purportedly saw. He knows how people look from the same perspective, he just kept repeating that it couldn't have been a person. It was too big, and it walked through the swamp like it was nothing, said Hatswell. Last month, a couple in Northern Ireland reported seeing a similar creature in Ballyboley Forest. The Wood Woos, also known as the Wode Woes or the Wild Man, is a mythical creature, the equivalent of the North American Bigfoot, present in European literature from the Middle Ages. Critics believe that inaccurate accounts of possible apes written by explorers and travelers in that time period may have been responsible for the creation of the myth. In the summer of 2013, a hiker in Canada recorded a video taken at a long distance containing a bipedal creature that many viewers referred to as a Sasquatch. Meanwhile, the Irishman, while not completely sure as to what he really saw on that winter day, says he doesn't want to rule out anything. Most wild creatures are very cautious and secretive and rarely seen, he explained. I would like to see camera traps being set. I don't know what I've seen, as I see deer and quad bikes on the mountains regularly, along with hikers, dogs, and runners depending on where I walk. All I can say is that the thing I saw, for lack of a better word, was out in the open following a fence down a hill I had just left in the same direction, and it was moving fast on two legs, he said, adding that he has walked over 300 mountains in Ireland and seen things he could always name, but that this view was totally different. Sighting in Ontario, Canada 
I was somewhere between 19 and 21, give or take, and like most weekends, I was with my friends in the woods partying. We were all living in southwestern Ontario, roughly outside of the city of Kitchener-Waterloo, where the furthest outer suburb meets the edge of the countryside. This area of Ontario is interesting because it's a transition zone, located in the limestone country around the Niagara Escarpment, presumably near some caves. As many sightings have been, and features areas of mixed broadleaf and coniferous forest, farmland, remnants of prairie and savanna, and cool, dark, boggy eastern cedar woodland, some of which is extremely old growth. The landscape, for Americans unfamiliar with it, is similar to the landscape in the eastern portion of the upper Midwest. I hear Wisconsin in particular is basically the same. I won't go into detail about specific location etc., as this is where I spent my teens, and I have friends and family still living within a km or two of where this story takes place. We had one of our usual bush parties in the Oak Savannah in a nature park about 5 kilometers along the trails from my best friend's parents' place, and 15 or so of us were walking back sometime well after midnight. The weather was warm and muggy, and so my best guess puts it somewhere between July and September. There were probably 15 of us, and we were walking single file along the boardwalk that crossed through the cedar swamp on the edge of the park. Most of the gang, my best friend included, was quite drunk and stoned, and we were having a rowdy, raucous good time. I was actually reasonably sober, hadn't had anything to smoke, both of which were very unusual at the time, and was bringing up the rear since I had a flashlight. I was a little concerned about one of the drunks tripping and falling as it was an exceptionally dark night, as cloudy summer nights can be in southern Ontario under the thick forest cover. As I mentioned, the atmosphere was pretty jovial and crude, as is typical for 15-20 year old guys liquored on a summer night, and while there were preceding times where the forest felt weird and foreboding, Despite all being experienced outdoorsmen in much more remote areas and spending most of our weekends in the woods, this was not one of those times. As I was hung back from the group a little bit, I wasn't entirely locked into the gang's conversation and distracted and kind of doing my own thing. I was sweeping the flashlight around somewhat to my left and right as I enjoyed the nighttime scenery. I swept the flashlight to the right and noticed something kind of strange. I thought I spotted a deer darting away from the light of my flashlight off into the thicker, drier area of trees beyond the cedar swamp maybe 30 to 50 feet away from the boardwalk. As I watched it amble on a sort of semi-parallel diagonal alongside us and out of view, I started to feel sick. Something about the way it moved and the way it was shaped didn't make sense for a deer or any other animal I knew. We don't have much in the way of wildlife in SW Ontario anyway because of how much human land use there is, and outside of small irrelevant animals like foxes, raccoons, etc., there are really only deer and coyotes. I would consider that bears and wolves are possible in theory, but highly, highly unlikely as far as I've ever heard. The animal, a skinny humanoid, was the same shade of white as the thing I saw in the experience I linked above, the same luminescent grayish white as the reflective strips on a pair of jogging pants, though duller. I saw no face in this instance either, though the head was equally bald and round or oval, like a primate's. Again, it appeared bipedal, though bent over on all fours, ass in the air. Unlike the galloping creature that I saw in Nova Scotia, this one seemed to be moving more slowly, at a pace akin to a jog. It seemed to be trotting, almost like the gait of a happy dog, and I remember noticing tons of hip sway as it walked, almost in the squat sort of way a marmot, skunk, or badger moves. This makes sense for the way a bipedal animal would move on all fours anyway, since hinging at the hips means that the ball and socket joint of the hip can't rotate fully, and the hip flexor muscles being shortened aren't able to be used with the same fluency for lateral forward movement. The thing made zero sound despite running off into the woods right in front of me, which was bizarre considering the number of sticks littering the floor of the forest. I immediately felt my voice catch in my throat as immense, primal fear gripped me. I realized nobody had seen it, all corked out of the heads and bantering about whatever topic, but also at the same moment it occurred to me that if I raised the alarm, the whole group would panic and scatter, and the ensuing chaos meant somebody would be, at the very least, likely to fall into the swamp or potentially attract whatever I just saw to our group. Was it stalking us? Was it startled and retreating out of fear? or had it been discovered and was escaping the way a cougar does when you face it straight on. I had no idea and am still not sure. My heart was beating through my chest, but I continued to bring it up, constantly swinging my flashlight around and checking over my shoulder as the hair, just like in the Nova Scotia experience, stood straight up on my neck and arms. We reached the road without further incident, but I was deeply, deeply disturbed. As I mentioned above, several of us had had much more subtle odd experiences in the forest before this, including hearing strange noises, wood knocking, feeling as if we were being watched or hunted, and once I personally felt the intense and overwhelming intuition that I had to leave immediately, nobody else in the group had felt as such, but I convinced them to go. 
My best friend, who is extremely interested in the paranormal, was equally as terrified as I was when I told him about this the next day, and forever after, we still walk around those woods when I visit home, we've been quite cautious, always inclined to expect something weird to occur when we head there at night. We called it the Wendigo. I've never encountered a Wendigo, but when I was staying out in Arizona with a friend, I heard some very, very strange sounds in the desert. My friend couldn't hear them, but I clearly heard what sounded like a child crying or squealing. I went out to the back patio of the trailer we were in and listened hard, and it creeped me out infinitely when I could still hear the sounds, exactly the same, never changing pitch or cadence. My friend, even standing right where my feet were planted, still could not hear the sounds. I thought I was going nuts. The next day, I related my experience to G, an older relative of my friend, who related to me an encounter he had almost 30 years before that day. G told me about how he lived on the outskirts of a reservation where people had gone missing in alarming amounts. There were no mass disappearances at one time, but a steady increase in missing persons reports left tribal law enforcement and local law enforcement at odds with one another and very suspicious that a serial killer may be on the loose. During a joint investigation, both law agencies went house to house, interviewing residents close to where most of the people were last seen and asking them what kind of information they could provide. When they got to where G was staying, they were asking questions about strange sounds and sightings in the mountainous area directly next to the reservation. G thought it was odd, but informed them that once in a while, he'd hear a child crying out near the entrance to the mountain trail and go out in his truck looking to see if anyone was lost. He never saw any people, but noted that the usually buzzing surroundings were so still that it unnerved him. One night in particular, G said he saw what looked like a sick stag in the woods, not far up the path leading to the start of the mountain trail. He said it was pale, with visible antlers, and it looked like it was laying down on its front hooves and struggling to get up. G explained that he stepped out of his truck with his flashlight, turned to grab his rifle, and by the time he looked back up the trail, the stag was gone. It was at this point that a stench so foul overtook him that his eyes stung, and he involuntarily gagged and had to hold back his dinner. He described it as an earthy, sticky, palpable musk smell that had a sweet aftertaste to it. He also said it smelled like rotten meat and copper. He was immediately beset with a feeling of mortal dread and had to contain his panic as he jumped back into his truck. He said that as he was backing up to leave the narrow trail, he heard, clear as day, almost as if it were right in the truck with him, a child's cry. Only this close, I sounded more like a powerful wail that was impossible for a child to emit. He hightailed it out of there and was in the process of looking for a new place to live. He said he had trouble sleeping for a while after that night due to constant nightmares of things banging on his windows. After he told the police this account, he said the two officers looked at one another, shared some kind of nonverbal interaction, thanked him for his time, and asked him to call the station instantly if he heard any strange sounds or saw anything. Before they left, he said he asked them how many other people reported seeing or hearing something similar to what he just told them. They responded that at least one person from each house they visited reported hearing children crying in the night with other residents of the same household claiming to never have heard or seen anything unusual. They also said that at least one other person they interviewed had seen a pale-looking creature on the mountain, which they thought was a big cat of some sort. What impacted G the most, though, was when one of the tribal officers told him that, while interviewing the family of a missing person, they related that in the weeks leading up to their child's disappearance, their child had been suffering from nightmares of demon deers outside of their window and drew many pictures of what it looked like. G asked if they had the pictures, and the officer produced a Polaroid of the drawing. It looked almost exactly like what he'd seen that night on the Mount Rail. Pale, skinny, big antlers. Except this drawing had features he was fortunate to not have seen in person, huge red eyes, sharp bloody teeth and claws, and a black hole next to it with arms sticking out of it. G moved two days after this. After G finished telling me that story, he laughed heartily, probably at the horrified expression on my face. He said, don't worry, as long as you don't follow the cries, you will be all right. I've never forgotten that story. I have recently spotted a possible cryptid or other worldly creature, and it freaks me out. One day I was chilling watching TV, and I was home alone. I looked out the window and saw a humanoid figure about 9 or 10 feet tall. It had human features and proportions aside from its size. I sat frozen for about 10 minutes and didn't move. It only walked by and didn't move irregularly or look at me. About two weeks later, I was on my front porch reading, and I saw it again. It was kind of slowly running while crouched down in front of the neighbor's bushes. I looked down at my book for less than a second and looked back up. It was already over where my garage was, and it was peering its head around at me. I then ran back inside. Both occurred at my house in my front and backyards. 
It never made a sound or any sudden movements. One weird thing I remember well was that when I saw it both times, I immediately felt a strong sense of hunger. I am confused by this. One last time, I will describe it. 9 to 10 feet tall. Human features and proportions. It was almost pitch black, like a shadow. It never spoke or made a sound. And it also never did anything that would be supernatural, but it would stare at me and sort of patrol my house at night for a very short amount of time. If anyone has had an experience like this or can help me find out what it is, that would be so much appreciated. 20 years ago, when I was 5 years old, my family lived in rural Litchfield, Ohio. One day, in the afternoon, I went to the kitchen for a drink while my stepfather took a nap in his bedroom. In our backyard, we had two Osage orange trees that were about 7 meters tall, sitting next to each other about 75 meters from the house at the edge of our property. Our kitchen was at the back of the house, and at the end of the kitchen was a sliding glass door that led to the backyard. As I looked outside the sliding glass door into the backyard, I saw a seven-foot-tall owl or eagle-like humanoid creature standing underneath one of the Osage orange trees. The creature was facing sideways to the right of my perspective and had its back to me slightly. The creature was all black, and its head was slightly higher than the lowest branches of the Osage orange tree it stood under. I stared at it for a few seconds and noticed it was looking down at a spot on the ground. The longer I looked, the more frightened I began to feel. I could see its wings clearly, they looked like what you would imagine angel wings looking like, but the large black feathers and the crest of the wing sat slightly higher than his head level. I could also see its head, but the head was without feathers, instead, it looked furry like a short-haired dog. As a five-year-old boy, I thought the creature was an eagle because I thought an eagle was a really big bird, and I was worried that if I went outside, it would carry me away. After a few moments, the creature turned toward the house, and I hid behind the kitchen counter as fast as I could in raw fear because I thought it noticed me somehow, like it looked at me because it knew I was there. I was worried it saw me and would come get me, so I ran into my room and hid behind my bed. The next day, I went to the spot where I saw the creature looking down at the ground, and on the ground was a dead groundhog laying on its back. The groundhog had its entire chest and abdominal cavity cut open in a surgical manner right down the middle and flayed open. The groundhog looked freshly killed, with no signs of decay. Nothing I could tell was visibly eaten, which even as a kid I thought was odd. I played outside every day, and I never saw that dead groundhog until that day. As I grew up, I realized it was no eagle, and it actually resembled a humanoid owl. But neither the owl nor the eagle are seven feet tall. Years later, I would try to look up what it could have been, and for a while, I thought it could have been Mothman. I saw the testimony of people who claimed to have seen Mothman, and they said that he had similar features to those that I saw. Mothman was also sighted in the Ohio and West Virginia regions, which were relatively close to me as I lived in Ohio at the time. On one sighting, the witnesses said that when they visited the spot where they encountered him later on, they saw a deer cut open the same way that I saw the groundhog. Does anyone have any information to help me figure out what I saw? Was it Mothman slash Owlman, Strix, or something else? I read that in ancient Latin folklore, Strix would disembowel their prey and eat the gastrointestines. I'm in East Tennessee. I was just out driving down a road I've never been down before, just out of curiosity. As I went down the road, I saw a few abandoned trailers, an old rundown church, and then an odd building next to it, but the road started to get a bit ducky, like it was just very overgrown. I decided to make a turn, did it in the middle of the road, and as I started to drive back down the road, I was looking at the buildings one last time, looking at the church. I saw something staring at me. It was about three quarters THS the way up the side of the church in height, so probably like 8 to 12 feet tall, was all white, and god the ducking eyes, I can't get them out of my mind. They were deep, extremely reflective black. I made eye contact with it. I nearly started crying immediately. I put the pedal on the floor so ducking fast that I completely ignored most road laws on the way home. I probably won't be getting much sleep. This was about 10 minutes or less from my home. To begin, the time was just around when the sun sets, and I was around 8 to 9 playing in the lake called Lake Mead. This was around 2008 to 2009, and my mom and dad were fighting at the time. To get away from my dad, no abuse or anything, they just needed to have time alone, my mother drove to this lake, and we attempted to stay overnight, we never did. I had those snorkeling gear you could get at Walmart for kids and was in very shallow water. I was very short, but I could clearly remember the water not going past my hips. Upon snorkeling, I saw a dark figure, almost like it was stopping me from snorkeling past that point. Unsure of what it was, I lifted my head above the water and saw a huge triangular fin towering over me. 
Since I was very short, it might have seemed a whole lot bigger to me than the average person, but it was enough to stand over a decent sized person too if they were standing, I'd like to say it was about 7 to 8 feet high. It was black and didn't have a face or any sign of life other than water coming out of it from its sides, perhaps water was on its back and was falling off after rising up from the water. The thing that makes me sure I wasn't crazy was the fact that my mom and my little sister saw it. My mother screamed for me to get out of the water, and I did. My mom saw the same thing I saw, it was fin-like, and when she screamed and told me to get out, she saw the figure, creature, or fin submerge back into the water. When it was submerged in the very shallow water, it made no bubbles or waves. I don't remember what it was, I've never seen anything like that before. It couldn't have been another diver or a person because it was too tall and didn't look human at all. I don't doubt it could have been a living creature, but it made no noise and had no face. If I could remember or imagine it having a face, I'd say its face was similar to that of a stingray, even though I'm not entirely certain. It makes no sense for something that big to appear out of nowhere and submerge completely into shallow water without making any big splashes. After telling my dad, he tries to say it was one of those big catfish, yet this fish basically stood over me, and I wish I could remember all the details, I just remember it as a big black fin that scared the living hell out of me. My mom, sister, and I don't remember when the creature or fin emerged, we just remember seeing it stand above me and go down straight after. It wasn't fast, it went down slowly. Ever since then, I've been afraid to swim in those shallow waters. I'm fine with jumping out of our boat and swimming in the deeper part of the water, but I'm literally terrified of being close to the shore at the lake, in fear it'll come back and take me for good. This story takes place about five years ago or so. My family was staying in Prince Edward Island for the summer, as we had done every year for my whole life. I was about 15 or 16 years old, and my four siblings were from one to seven years younger than me. One sunny day, all five of us decided to take a walk down one of the dirt roads by our farmhouse because we had nothing else to do. Honestly, we never really walked down that particular road because there was a dog in one of the yards that did not sound nice, so we never wanted to bother him, but today was different for some reason. Anyway, on that day, we were walking and chatting as people do, and about 20 minutes into the walk, we saw it. We all stopped dead in our tracks because, about half a mile, or so, up the road, we had seen this pitch black, large cat-like creature crawling across the road and going into a somewhat large bush. I believe I should note that in our area there are no trees and barely any shrubbery, it's all open potato fields, as far as your eye can see. So this thing, whatever it may be, came from an open field and went into the bush on the side of the road that was the only hiding place or shelter for quite a while. My next younger brother, having nerves of steel, walked down to the bush and investigated as soon as we encountered the sighting. There were no footprints or anything obvious. He did not crawl in in fear that there might be a den or the like in the bush. He was glad he decided this because we told him later that we had all been watching from afar the whole time and we did not see it leave. The only way I have been able to describe whatever it was is as a very large, pitch black feline like creature that was crouched as if it were weary of being in the open or on the hunt. At first, we said that it might have been a coyote, they grow them big up there. But we ruled that out because it moved like a cat, not a dog. The only other thing we could think of was a panther, but they don't live there. So now we've all agreed to just claim it was some weird thing we saw. We just call it the beast. My other brother now believes that only one of us saw a shadow or something and somehow convinced the others that it was a monster. But I remember distinctly how we all said, what was that? And became very frightened. Any ideas if it could have been some sort of cryptid or something entirely else? So to this day, I don't know what this thing I saw was other than a skinwalker. And I just want to point out that I was not the only person who saw this. I was in second or third grade at the time of this story. I am an animal lover, so I love any animal in existence, and besides dogs and cats, my favorite is wolves. And my speech teacher knew how much I loved wolves, so she said that after answering a certain number of questions, we could look at live footage of wolves. I was so happy. I got to look at it about two or three times. Now that speech class was over, I could look at the wolves one last time. And this was live footage, as I said earlier, recorded on what I think was a very tall tree in the woods, so we got a great view. And we were both looking at the wolves when I caught something in the corner of my eye. I looked at what just stepped into the camera's view, and what I saw I couldn't explain. It was a grey figure, and now I could not tell how tall it was because of how high up the camera was. But it was grey, and if this was a person, then all I can say is that it had no skin, it was totally pale. Keep in mind that this was winter, it was cold outside, and no man could walk out that far into the woods with no clothes on. And I pointed it out to my speech teacher, and she saw it, it was just standing there, watching the wolves not move. 
I asked, what is that? In which she replied, I don't know. So the best way I can describe what we saw was maybe the rake? Christmas night, 2007. The day was pleasant and festive, opening presents early in the morning with my sisters, a hearty breakfast made by dad, delicious smells from the kitchen as mom and dad prepared a feast, visits from extended family bringing pies and cakes for dessert. Around two, we all sat down to eat and then lazed about for the rest of the afternoon into the evening. At about eight, after everyone had left and the food was all put away for round two the following day, I decided to head over to visit my friend in the next village. The drive would be about 10 minutes if I took back roads to get there. So, I did. First, a little background on where my friend lived. It was a housing development surrounding a private lake, you might call it a gated community. You could still drive through it freely after hours by entering one of the four private entry points. Since the community was built around a lake, the roads surrounding it took on a sort of spiral shape. The houses were sparsely positioned on the outermost part of the spiral road, closest to the four private entry points. As you drove in further, there were a lot more houses positioned closer together, nearer the lake. My friend lived on the outer edge of this development, so once I reached the entry point, it would only take me another few minutes until I reached his house. His house, along with all the others, were far enough apart that you couldn't see them from the road as you drove by, there were either woods all around with long drives or open fields with long drives. You could see porch lights in the distance, but that was about it. As I entered the development, the speed limit dropped from 30 miles per hour to 20. There were no street lights in the development, and for some reason, I never put my high beams on. I couldn't go any faster than the speed limit because there were speed bumps in place every 30 feet or so for a bit. It was a mild night. I remember having my driver's side window open slightly to take in some fresh air. I remember driving in silence, which was unusual for me, I normally always listen to music when driving. I must have been enjoying the quietness after the commotion of the day. I reached a section of road that had barren fields on either side and woods set back. Houses were probably nestled back into the trees. As I drove, I noticed what looked like someone walking up ahead on the opposite side of the road, coming in my direction. Mind you, I was still going about 20 miles per hour the whole time, so it was probably less than a minute by the time the walker came into clear view. I got a quick scan of it from my windshield before I got my car, and they were exactly parallel. This is what I saw. It was not a person. It stood on two long legs, with long arms hanging down from its shoulders. It was strong looking. Lean and muscular, but not beefy in stature. It looked thin at the same time. It stood at least seven feet tall. It was light colored, I was not sure whether it was white, tan, yellow, or grayish. It didn't appear to have fur, but there was some texture to the skin, it wasn't smooth. There appeared to be something coming off its back. I don't know what this was. All I can recall about its face is the small features it had, but the mouth and jaw were notably large. And it had pointed things atop its head, two things going straight upward with something mingled between the two things. That's what I got from a quick scan and from my observation of it as it neared my car. As my car became parallel to it within a split second, I went from looking out my windshield to looking at it from my driver's side window. In that moment, its face quickly peered down at me, and all I remember was the mouth opening wide. Out came a remarkable scream that I'll never forget. It gives me chills just thinking about it. It consisted of a high-pitched shrill or shriek, enveloped by a deep guttural growl. Both sounds happened simultaneously in that scream. I kept driving all the while. This was all happening so fast that I didn't even have a chance to be scared, shocked, or anything. I continued driving, went past my friend's house, and drove home. I called him to tell him what happened and that I just needed to get back. I was probably running on adrenaline to get back home. Later on, I was in total shock after it sank in. Had my driver's side window been fully opened, it would have touched me, or worse, taken me. I'm certain of it. To this day, I still haven't worked out what this was. Anyone else see anything like this or hear what I heard? I was probably 19 when it happened, maybe newly 20. My then boyfriend, Christopher, whom I called Kit, was visiting me from Seattle to celebrate my mom's birthday in our hometown, a city called Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. I was living in Alberta, attending a university there, when Kit arrived. We were planning on driving out to my mom's place together. I was very eager to introduce him to my family. They were eager to meet him. The two of us were excited and giggly while we were getting ready to leave. I was packing up the last of my schoolwork and clothes while rambling on about what snacks we should buy for the long drive, while Kit, who hadn't unpacked from the flight, already had his bags in the car. He was going to drive for the first half of the drive, and I drove for the second half. 
After only a couple hours of driving, we switched, and I was driving. The sun was setting by now. I remember Kit pointing out how pretty the pinkish-orange sky was. And before we knew it, it was dark. It had still been an uneventful drive. We were listening to a podcast. We pointed out owls or raccoons in trash bins when we passed truck stops. Nothing of note. Until a deer appeared in the street out of nowhere. I slammed on the brakes, and we stopped maybe 20 feet from the deer. And it was just there, standing. Staring back at us. It's not unusual for a deer, as I'm sure you all know. But I was staring for an uncomfortable amount of time. Even for a deer in headlights. Like 3 to 4 minutes at least. I honked the car horn a couple of times. No response. After another couple minutes, a guy in a white Honda drove up behind us and stopped. He was honking too. And we both sat there, honking at this deer. Or maybe he was honking at me, honking at the deer. Anyway, eventually the deer walked off into the woods, his nose pointed in the air. And we carried on. The Honda guy was clearly in a rush because he passed us the second he got the chance, and then we were the ones following him. That's when something really weird happened. We heard a loud, deep voice say, help. From a direction I couldn't quite pinpoint. It was loud enough to be heard over the podcast, yet quiet enough to seem far away. We slowed down a little bit and glanced at each other. I suppose we were just wondering if we actually heard that. The Honda slowed down too. We decided it was just background noise in the podcast, which was a true crime podcast, so it made sense, and carried on driving. When again we heard a help. Help me, please. At this point, the podcast had ended, and we slowed down again, looking out the open window. The voice was the same as the one before, and it sounded just as far as the one before, but we were going too fast for anyone to keep up with us. The guy driving the Honda stuck his hand out of his window and gestured for us to pull over. We stopped at a tourist photo area beside a lake with some factories across from it. I think it's a cement plant or something. The Honda driver and his wife both got out. They were both in their late 50s and asked us if we also heard the cry for help. We said yes. And the four of us chatted for a bit about it. And then, again, from an undetermined direction, help. Please help. The older man called out to the voice, hello? Is someone there? Are you okay? The voice responded, help. Please help. And he responded, where are you? Are you hurt? The voice sounded significantly closer this time. And it sounded almost contorted, help. Is someone there? The old man, after hearing the change in voice, went pale white. He looked at his wife, then at us, then over at the forest, and said, yet much quieter, hello? And the voice, once again, though this time much deeper and even less human sounding, replied, help. Is someone there? We were all kind of freaked out, so the older couple called the police, as did we, and then we went back to driving. As we continued down the road, Kit and I didn't talk. We were both wildly uncomfortable. We just watched the tree line. Counting the deer we saw. Quite a few of them are late at night. Although I'm not a deer expert, maybe they graze at night or something. We eventually arrived at my mother's house, and I told her and my sisters about the event, and they all got really anxious listening to it. My older sister scolded us, saying someone could have been in serious danger, and I suppose she was right. But I'm not sure. The voice it made didn't sound natural. The more it was called, the less human it sounded. Every cry for help got more and more twisted. I'm not well educated on the matters of local folklore or mythology. I don't know if there's some cryptozoological boogeyman out there who could explain it. Or maybe all of us were just sleep deprived and sharing some sort of mass hysteria. I'm not sure. But it was still the creepiest event of my life. My old man worked up at the border of Washington and Canada for law enforcement. Sensors had been going off all week along a known smuggling route. He, three guys, and an attack dog went up to the area to set up for the night. They get to the trail and drop off two agents and the dog on one side then they drive around to the other side, where they set up for the night. A couple hours in, they get radioed by their co-workers to come back over and pick them up. They arrive back with the other agents and get out of the car. These guys are scared shless, saying something is on top of the ridge. My dad and the other guy are giving the two guys that called them shit. Within minutes, they stopped giving those guys shit. It started off with large rocks or logs being rolled down the hill. Then they heard it, a screaming howl that my dad, an avid hunter and outdoorsman, had never heard in his life. This thing barrels down the mountain, covering a couple hundred meters, only to stop 30 to 50 meters in front of them behind a bush. The attack dog with them instantly went behind its handler. All they could see was this unknown animal's eyes piercing through the bush. All four got in the car and left absolutely terrified. 
The old man said he wasn't saying it was Bigfoot, but without a doubt in his mind, it was an animal he had never seen or heard before. From the rolling of rocks and logs to the screaming howl and the absolute speed it came down the ridge, plus, what police attack dog cowers behind its handler. They don't know what they ran into that night, but he wasn't ruling out Bigfoot either. My wife and I were taking a late night stroll through a wooded area near our home. We know the area well and have frequented the grove many times. As we approached the wooded area, we could see lights from the houses beyond the grove shining through the trees. As we approached, we noticed there appeared to be shadows darting through the trees. We immediately thought there were children playing around down there. We decided to go and check it out, possibly to scare the kids for fun. We got close to the trees and realized there were no children in the grove of trees, no one could be seen at all. We took a side entrance into the grove and walked into the trees, wondering if the shadows we saw simply came from the light from the houses in the distance, like maybe our eyes were playing tricks on us. The grove was well lit, as there was a lot of moonlight and virtually no leaves left on the trees. It was fairly cold, it happened before the first snow fell and dead leaves littered the ground. As we walked, holding hands, into the grove, we abruptly heard a footfall in the leaves. At that time, an unknown entity crossed our path. It moved in glimpses as if under a strobe light, but no light was given off. As it crossed our path, it was visible one moment, then gone the next. This alternated as it strode in front of us. It smiled at us and appeared to be waving. I wasn't prepared for this, and seeing it froze me in fear. The entity was a biped that stood taller than me at 5'10". It was completely naked. Though no genitalia could be seen, where human genitals should have been, there appeared to be nothing there, as you would imagine a doll would look. Its skin was a dark grayish color. It had very small, black eyes that reflected the moonlight. Its ears were tight against its head, the ears came to a point. The jaw was bigger than any human. The jaw line went all the way up the sides of its head, as if its smile stared almost behind its ears. Rows of sharp white teeth were visible as it smiled at us. It had slits for a nose that were slightly flared at the top. I can't remember how many fingers it had, but it definitely had digits that it held up as it waved. The encounter lasted all but a few minutes. The instant I was able, I twisted my wife's arm, and I grabbed hold of her wrist. I'm twice my wife's size and have a very athletic build. I ran at top speed, literally dragging her in the dirt through the leaves out of the grove, up the grassy hill, through the soccer field, and into the street. As we reached the street, I noticed my wife was yelling and screaming at me to stop and go back. Go back, she said. She badly wanted to make contact with the entity. But my fear overpowered me, and I dragged us both into the house. From our doorstep, we could see the grove of trees. I immediately said, don't say anything. I didn't want our testimonials to be tainted with any kind of suggestion from one another. I separated us into different rooms and had us write down our testimonials to what we saw. To no surprise, we both describe the same entity with the same features. This event has affected my life very negatively, as my family thinks my wife and I made it up or are just plain lying to get attention or something. Not knowing what this entity was keeps me up many nights. I must have thought about every possibility. I thought it could have been a spirit, a human in Hollywood-style movie makeup, or even an alien. To this day, not knowing eats at the back of my mind. I fully know aliens exist. With the vastness of space and the countless stars in the universe, it becomes clear that we cannot possibly be the only ones. I can even feel my heart racing as I recall the event. Did I miss out on a one in a billion chance to possibly communicate with another intelligent life form? I only have one regret in my life, and that regret is not going back to find out for sure what it was. If we were ever going to communicate with beings like this, if indeed it was one, we needed to have love at the center of our awareness so we wouldn't flee in fear for no reason. For a long time, I never told anyone but my closest friends and my immediate family for fear that people would think we were crazy. But it has come to the point that this itch in the back of my brain has gotten so bad that I feel it is necessary to tell others about what we saw. This story is from my girlfriend's perspective, and she still, to this day, has no idea what she encountered. So to begin, this story happened back in 2018. I arrived in this small, rural town near Cape May. The company I was working for at the time was sending me out to go door to door, advertising cable and Wi-Fi that they wanted me to sell. I was getting weird vibes all throughout the day, as the town itself was very small and a bit creepy, with people staring at me or giving me the cold shoulder for the entire day. It seemed like a lot of the townsfolk that I encountered that day were on edge, and it was a weird, tense atmosphere that I shrugged off, as people are weird all the time. I continued doing my job, chugging a Red Bull to keep me going, which didn't affect me at all, surprisingly. Besides the weird atmosphere, 
The scenery was actually quite pretty once you got off of the main road. I had to stop at different streets, and some were in the woods on long and seemingly beautiful, endless roads. It was quite scenic. Just before sunset, I was scheduled to visit a few houses on a small peninsula. To get to this peninsula, you had to go down a very long road, past a summer camp area, past a trailer park, and past the woods, and then you finally find yourself in a small open area with a bay marsh, a couple small, expensive houses, and shore access. The houses were so close to the water that it seemed like a code violation, but I'm sure they were built to withstand storms since they looked so expensive. Every house had its own theme, and the area was mostly deserted. Only one house had someone inside, whom I had talked to after knocking on his door. I was so distracted looking at the houses and scenery that I didn't notice how fast the sunset was approaching. I came to the realization that I should start heading back to avoid being alone on that long, deserted pathway in the woods. As a smaller female, I'm never comfortable after dark and isolated places, especially without cell service. I was making my way down the path, so far, so good, as it wasn't completely dark yet. As I approached the wooded area of the road, I was walking a bit faster since there were no street lights and the sunlight was rapidly disappearing. As I walked at a decently fast pace, I noticed something. The woods were eerily quiet. All the life that I was hearing before was gone. No crickets, no birds, just pure silence. I stopped in my tracks and got chills down my spine as I felt the feeling that I was being watched. I looked around the dark woods for any sudden movements, and then, like clockwork, something up ahead made its way out of the tree line. It looked to be some type of large animal. My brain went into overdrive, analyzing whatever this animal was. Was it a bear? A dog? No. It looked like a large dog. But dogs don't get this big. Though I was intimidated by its large size, whatever it was hadn't noticed me. Even though I was scared, I also didn't want to walk back and go into that one man's house. As a woman, I would rather take my chances with a wild animal than be alone with a man I don't know in a deserted holiday neighborhood. Suddenly, as I was thinking about this, the large animal in the distance had finally noticed my presence. It was observing me, not entirely sure of what to do with me. There wasn't enough light anymore for me to see the animal's face, but I felt unusually frightened. Whatever I was looking at was definitely too big to be a black bear, with a shoulder height of at least 5 feet on all fours, which is comparable in size to a brown bear. The mass on this creature was extensive, as the outline of what I could see looked like a wolf on steroids. It was very muscular. I also noticed that the outline of its face was very similar to that of a German shepherd or wolf, as it had perked ears and a long snout. In the heat of the moment, I could only hear the sound of my heart palpitating as fear and adrenaline started to crawl their way into my bloodstream. It felt as if time stood still, and then it dawned on me. What I was looking at wasn't a normal animal, and it was simply too big to be any animal that I could recognize from New Jersey's catalogue of fauna. And, if it wanted to attack me, I would be powerless against it. It was simply too big. Though, to calm myself down, I threw the idea that this creature was out of the ordinary out because I felt like it could be rationalized somehow. I made my brain go back to the idea of this being maybe a large dog or coyote. I also did not believe in cryptids and was completely unaware of what size coyotes are supposed to be, so I made a quick decision. Realizing that this could very well be a life or death situation, I came to the conclusion that this very large dog-like creature was probably a skittish coyote that I could scare off, at least temporarily, to calm down my nerves. What other choice did I have? The longer I kept standing there, the more aggressive I might come across to this animal, and I didn't want it to get territorial or get the idea that I was easy prey. So, I decided I would make the most hideous, loud, confusing, and startling scream or howl I could muster and just sprint the rest of the way. After I screeched this hideous sound out of my body as hard as I could, the animal quickly changed its body language to defensive, but then it quickly changed its mind to deciding I wasn't worth a fight as it ran a decent distance into the woods, not too far though. I decided to sprint as fast as I could pass that area and beyond. I sprinted until I reached the end of the road and noticed there was a summer camp area with street lights near me. I rested on top of a table there, out of breath and feeling my heart pound out of my chest. However, I was still very shaken up and still felt like I was being watched. I kept my eyes on the tree line. My eyes were darting around, looking for any sign that this animal was still there. Once I felt like the coast was clear, I located the next house I was scheduled to visit, and I quickly made my way over. I met a nice family who ended up buying cable from me, and I told them what had happened to me that night and how I was treated by the locals. The lady of the family, who I presumed to be the mother, said, I don't know why they sent you out here alone. These woods are dangerous after dark, and there are creepy people who live around here. 
the impression she was giving me was that there were animal encounters she couldn't explain and that there were lots of ex-convicts in the area, and people who should have been arrested but haven't been. She was equally concerned about the people as she was about the animals around this place. This gave me goosebumps. How many times today could my life have been taken? They were extremely concerned for my safety and told me to contact my team leader so I could get picked up. They said they didn't want me to go outside again and that I should call it quits for the night and not make it to any other houses. To this day, I still have no idea what creature I encountered. There are strange things in the woods, things people don't speak about or cover up. I felt like the townsfolk of that town knew something about what I encountered. So, weird creature I encountered in those woods, let's never meet again. There have been multiple sightings in my small town of Merrill, Michigan, something that doesn't match a single cryptid I've read about yet, and I've read a lot. I personally have not seen it, so I'm sorry for breaking that rule, but I have three witnesses that I would put my life on, and I really want to know about this thing. The first witness is my uncle, and he is the main reason I'm on this hunt. When he was young, he used to take night walks in the neighbor's woods. Right before sunrise, as long as it was dark enough, no neighbors could see him. He would take a very dim flashlight with him on purpose, and if he thought anyone saw him or was following him, he'd put his hand over it and hide in the woods' darkness. He claims the main things that scared him were the raccoons and opossums. He never had problems with people on his walks, but he still knew the risk of trespassing. Though his story isn't very exciting, he got the best view of the creature out of all three witnesses, claiming that it only stood a few feet tall and had legs bent backwards with large, fly-like eyes, and the rest of it looked like a kangaroo and a monkey hybrid. There are many cryptids that are similar in appearance, but none of them have thick hair and big eyes like this one had. I showed him drawings of other lookalike cryptids, and he's dismissed every one of them. He claimed that he was walking out of the woods just as it was getting brighter, the sky was grey and the woods were still dark from the trees, but the road was almost visible down the whole mile. On his way across the road back to the house, he saw that thing a little ways down the road. It's said to have crossed the road in two steps, despite being short, and disappeared into the woods my uncle had just exited. The second witness is deceased now. He was a natural conspiracist, so it came as no surprise when I heard this story years ago. Though his description was much less valuable, I have the belief that this was the same cryptid. A couple miles away from the first incident, this man said that he had seen a small, ape-like figure jump almost to the tops of the trees. This is the least resourceful sighting, because I cannot ask this man to answer anything he left out or to give more information. This is all I have for his sighting. The third is my grandma's good friend, Sylvia, from a state away. Every 4th of July, they park a camper in my grandma's yard and stay for a week or two to visit all the friends and family they left behind when they moved out of state. Keep in mind that these folk have never even heard the stories of this creature, and for this story, I was in the house as it happened. Sylvia's husband had a few beers with my grandparents. There's a big tree on the side of a barely used road, and he walked over to it to use the bathroom. As he was peeing on this tree, he noticed the same big, black bug eyes that my uncle had seen. It was staring him down from the tree line across the road, and as soon as he focused on it, the cryptid backed up into the brush and was gone. Me and my uncle freaked out about this, as you would. Because it had been six or so years since someone we knew spotted this thing. As crazy as it sounds, I and my whole family believe in and know this creature. We've even narrowed down where it possibly calls home based on how far sightings go. This was 10 years ago or so, and basically what happened was that my uncle D and my uncle J were hanging out in the backyard. It was evening, getting a bit dark, but it was summer, and the sun hadn't set yet. My uncle D was throwing a good-sized stick or small branch for his dog. The dog eventually got tired and went inside, so my uncle walked over to the shed and threw the stick off the edge. The way the yard is is that there's a fence going around the perimeter, but, it's clearer on the map, along the length of the yard, directly past the fence, there's a straight drop, about 100 feet. At the bottom are a bunch of old, very tall trees, Douglas firs, I want to say? That run along the bank of a river. Basically, there's no way anyone could stand behind the shed and not die. Anyway, Uncle D threw the stick over the fence and walked back over to Uncle J about 30 seconds later, the stick comes flying at them from behind the shed, they were extremely lucky they saw it because they managed to duck, and the stick hit the house behind them and broke in half. They both said that it was thrown faster than any person could have physically thrown it, and if it had hit one of them, they would have been seriously injured. Now neither of my uncles are the type of people who would make something like this up. They may have had a beer or two that night, but most likely they were just smoking cigars, which is extremely common for them. After my uncle D told this story, 10 years later, he looked so freaked out and kind of sick. 
I'd try to get more details, but he wouldn't talk about it anymore and change the subject. I'm trying to figure out what this could have been. I've been trying to look up creatures in the PNW, but all I'm finding is Bigfoot. While I'm not saying it wasn't Bigfoot, I'd really like to try and find out what else it could have been. If you guys have any idea. I am spending the week at my grandparents' house. They live several miles away from Redding, California, in a sparsely populated area in Northern California, in a custom house with few neighbors. They are some of the kindest, friendliest, and most honest people I know. They maintain a very active and healthy lifestyle, growing most of their vegetables in their garden and hunting and fishing actively. They make a point of hiking in Lawson National Park at least once a week. My grandpa worked in the timber industry for decades and is a Bigfoot skeptic, having worked in the heart of the Pacific Northwest for much of his life without an encounter. My grandma has a degree in biology and is a firm Bigfoot believer. She backpacked deep in the Pacific Northwest for two summers, for 10 days at a time, working for a wilderness patrol. She has never had an encounter but recalls strange noises and smells that she did not think much of then. While I was there, they were house-sitting for their neighbors, taking care of their cattle and dog. Their neighbors, I will refer to the husband as M, the wife as L, and the daughter as K, were in Alaska to fish and visit a family friend who I will refer to as T. The neighbors returned home yesterday morning, and we had dinner at their house. It was well known that I have had an interest in Bigfoot since a young age, and M was eager to tell me about a ghost town south of Seldovia, Alaska, that had been suddenly abandoned as a result of mass hysteria surrounding several unexplained disappearances and murders, according to their friend T. T claimed that the bodies that were found had been mutilated and had the limbs or heads ripped off. He blamed the attacks on Bigfoot. M mentioned that T was obsessed with Bigfoot and was totally convinced of its existence. According to M, T has claimed to have experienced strange noises and smells while working in Northern California, as well as seen strange faces looking at him from behind trees and having large rocks thrown at him while kayaking. These are two of the stories I heard. 1. T had claimed that while hunting with friends in Northern California, he had stopped on the edge of a meadow he believed deer were bedding down in. Suddenly, he smelled an awful smell that was so bad that he could barely breathe. He tied up his dogs, thinking it was a dead bear or deer, when suddenly the dogs lay down and started whimpering. He looked out across the meadow and saw a black bear standing on its hind legs, staring at something. Suddenly, it dropped on all fours and ran away. The smell suddenly stopped, but the dogs would not calm down. As they circled around the meadow, they looked back to see a tall black figure walk across the meadow a couple hundred yards away. He claimed it was much taller than a human, with longer arms and legs. It seemed unafraid of them and seemed to move with a kind of fluid grace. Late that night, they heard what sounded like people talking, but they couldn't make out the words. It sounded like it was within a hundred yards of their tent. 2. T had claimed that while hunting with a large group of people and two hunting dogs in Idaho, the dogs had run off into the woods barking. They later came back with their tails between their legs. Later that night, the dogs ran off again. This time, they could not be found. The men were starting to get scared and were worried their truck battery was running low, so they ended the search and left their shirts and some small animals they had killed on the ground around the truck, hoping the dogs would smell them. Late that night, one of the dogs came running back, terrified of something. No matter how hard they tried, they could not get the dog out of the truck. It was totally traumatized. Terrified, the men turned the truck lights on and grabbed their guns, but soon the truck's battery died, leaving them in total darkness. They heard strange noises and heavy footsteps in the forest around them and fired several shots in the woods, not hitting anything. In the morning, they found that the shirts and dead animals were missing. They were able to get the truck jump-started and left as soon as possible. Further up the road, they found the shirts with some strange hairs on them and the body of the other dog. It had been ripped in half. He later returned to the area with around 40 men with guns. They found nothing but large footprints. They encountered a ranger, who told them to leave and not come back. I have since heard rumors that there is an abandoned cabin in the area that has had the roof smashed and the door ripped off. He is too scared to return but has kept the shirts and hair in a trash bag. 